Gamers! My hardcore series has come to an unfortunate end, which means it's time to copy every Minecraft YouTuber to ever exist and make a movie from the series. So, starting from where it all began, I hope you enjoy. Today, we're starting a brand spanking new survival series. But unlike all my previous <coughs> unfinished series, uh, this time it's going to be hardcore, which means the series could pretty much end at any moment. Now, I've never played hardcore survival before and I'm pretty scared, but without wasting any more time, let's get straight into it. Okay, and now with a bunch of the basics obtained, which is some uh, stone tools, a furnace to cook up some food, we're now going to head out on a bit of an adventure. Oh, we've actually found a pillager outpost. I don't think that is uh, really a good idea to go into right now. Uh, it also looks like we might be on an island. Okay, thankfully we aren't actually on an island. That's where we started, but thankfully the mainland is pretty much all around us now. Now I actually just found some really cute animals over here. And with that said, I'm actually not gonna be slaughtering any animals during this series. And with that said, I actually just found all this juicy meat just uh, definitely lying on the ground. And I just used my sword here. You can see the, the durability taken away there. I actually just used that. Uh Killing a creeper, definitely. Okay, now that we are sustained for a little while, we found some nice juicy meat. I also found some sheeps as well. Um, definitely already dead. Uh, so we also managed to make a bed as well to escape the nighttime. See, I'm going to be playing this series very, very cautiously. I don't want it to end too early. So pretty much anytime I see a mob, I'm going to be hiding. Unless if I'm feeling pretty confident, which is uh, basically never. But yeah, for now, before the sun goes down, we're going to quickly jump into this jungle. Hopefully find some bamboo because I'm going to be needing scaffolding for all the building we're going to be doing soon. Also, just realize. I forgot to turn on my nice juicy leaves. There we go. That's looking a lot better. Okay. And thankfully, I actually just found some bamboo right here. And this is pretty much all we're going to need as we're going to be able to just grow this whenever we want. So I'm not going to really hunt for too much more. But yeah, now it's going nighttime. I'm a bit scared. So I'm going to dig myself a little rat hole and sleep for the night. All right, and so now with the bamboo obtained, it's time to go ahead and find some iron. I just found this nice view and wow, this actually looks so amazing. These shaders that I'm using with these settings are truly like just perfect. I'll be making a video on all of my shaders and settings in the near future. So be sure to subscribe for that. Oh yes, finally some iron. Oh, we got a whole bunch of it as well. All right, now with this iron found, I'm going to go ahead and actually find up enough for some tools and also some armor as well. And we'll see how we go. Oh, isn't this one of those like super rare biomes? Like the, the jungle edge? land or something like that. I haven't actually found one of these before. This is sick. Although I don't think I'm going to be building here. I feel like I want to probably build in a spruce biome because as you guys know, I love using spruce wood for all my builds, which will make everything easy. And also I'm pretty sure I'm wanting to make a big medieval village, something that I didn't really complete in my last series. As you can see, it's only two episodes long and I just kind of got bored of it. But in this series, I definitely have a lot more enthusiasm and energy to play because it is hardcore. It makes it more of a challenge for me. And also on that same topic as well, if this first episode gets over a thousand likes, I will be continuing the series. I just kind of want to use that as a way to kind of gauge your guys' enjoyment on this series. I don't really want to continue it if no one's going to be enjoying it or anything like that. So yeah, over a thousand likes within probably the first two weeks or so, and I will continue this series. All right, so I've actually just found the first enemy mob of the series. And like with a lot of the mobs that I'm going to be finding, I'm simply just going to be running away. All right, but now I've actually found a bunch of iron in here and there's a few mobs. So I'm going to have to put up my, my strong face. Okay, come on, Mr. Creeper, just explode. Yep, there we go. Okay, nice and easy. He actually uncovered some extra iron for me. Hell yeah. Oh, and we just found a abandoned mine shaft. All right, I think we're gonna have to explore this a little bit. But before I do, we actually have enough iron here to make a full set of iron armor and hopefully some tools as well. So I'm just gonna box myself in and uh, make some of those. Okay, and there we go. There's our first iron set of armor. I can't actually make any tools, so I just realized I don't have any wood. Actually, we're right outside of a freaking thing. I can't remember what it's called. And there's wood up here. So yeah, let's make some iron tools. Okay, now with our newfound iron armor and a couple of tools as well, we're gonna explore this mine shaft just a little bit. I'll probably do this off camera because it might be a little bit boring. I'll let you know if we find anything cool though. And uh, I'll probably see you guys once I have found, oh, actually, holy crap. Okay, we're actually staying away from that. That is very, da oh no. Get me out of here. Get me out. Okay, we just found our first diamond. Hell yeah, it was just in one of these chests. We've actually got another chest over here. So let's uh, let's check this one out. Oh, two more diamonds. We Okay, we can actually already make a diamond pickaxe. That's huge. What the hell? I don't know if that's like really lucky or not, but yeah, that's pretty good. That's so good. What the hell? 
Okay, while looking for a spruce biome, I've actually just stumbled across a really nice desert village. And I think I'm going to hunker down here for the night because I'm actually really happy that we found a village as I'm going to be wanting to do something pretty cool with all of the villages eventually. Um, okay, I'm going to bunk with you guys. All right, I think I've actually had a change of plans with where I want to build my upcoming medieval village. This area is absolutely phenomenal. I'm... Dude, like, this looks so good. We've got, like, a really nice-looking oak forest over this way, and we've just got this massive plains biome that is really, like, interesting. There's big mountains at the back here, and we've got some mountains at the front. This also leads over to a savanna biome, and it's not too far away from that village that I found before as well. So now what I'm going to do is find a spot that I want to actually make my starter underground base. I'm thinking probably over here on the side of one of these mountains, and, uh, yeah, let's just get started. All right, so the first thing I had to do was, of course, excavate a massive area for our underground base. Then I had to harvest a bunch of spruce trees and also smelt all of the cobblestone into regular stone to smoothen out our base. And then it was on to creating the actual layout of the base. Alright, now with all of the layout of the base done, it's time to go ahead and fill in whatever I can. Obviously I don't have all the blocks yet, so yeah. And now it's onto the actual entrance design. And unlike all of my other underground base tutorials that you might have actually seen, I've decided not to make this one a secret entrance as uh, there's no one else in the world playing with me. So I'm just gonna make it look as cool as possible. Okay, and now with our base mostly completed, I'll take you through a grand tour. So firstly, we have our entrance here with pretty much just a giant stone staircase all the way up to the actual entrance. And I know the entrance isn't too crazy. I wanted to keep it pretty mellow so that it actually fits in with our upcoming medieval town that we're going to be creating. And this entrance is very reminiscent of like a medieval mine kind of style. So that's what I've decided to leave it as. And now let's head on inside and take a look at the actual interior. So firstly, starting off, we have my bedroom area. I'm used to kind of saying like the bedroom area area or our bedroom area but this is my bedroom area and in here we just have some of my personal storage barrels along the top i'm gonna put like probably my armor and my tools in here just stuff that i don't want to get lost throughout the rest of all of the base storage and then we also have my bed down here and we also have this nice leaf design that i love incorporating in a lot of my builds i just really like the way this looks and it's something i came up with on my own so i'm gonna continue to use it to the left of this area we have my smelting section we've got five furnaces along the top and then another five down the bottom and then we have this really cool design with some more barrels in the center and it's kind of supported by this like little shelf design and I thought it looked really cool having the end trap doors like not there you might have seen me kind of playing around with this during the time lapse I just thought it looked cool like this then to the left of this we have my indoor crop farm I'm probably going to be expanding this as we go I'll probably push this wall back quite a bit and add in carrots and stuff it also looks like I might not have enough lighting in here so I might as well just chuck in some more lanterns so that these can actually grow then to the left of this we have uh, an unfinished section I'm going to be adding more chests in here I just don't have enough right now and I can't be bothered harvesting all of the trees out there at the moment then to the left of this, we of course have my entrance section. I'm gonna make this look a little bit cooler, probably add like an archway in here and stuff. Then next we have my main storage area with a whole bunch of double chests. We've got 25 double chests in total, I think. And I've already started sorting everything. I hate having stuff not sorted, so yeah. Then to the left, once again, we have my animal farms. 
Uh, okay, I thought the other sheep disappeared. Thank God it's still there. Yeah, I lured a whole bunch of cows and sheep in here. So these are going to be my little boys for my uh, food and also wool if I need any more wool. Then to the left of this, we have my crafting area. We've got just the solid blocks down the bottom, crafting table, smithing table, and a loom. I'm probably never going to use this. I just needed it to fill up this space. And then up here, we have like kind of the like not full blocks, if that makes any sense. We've got an anvil, stone cutter, and a grindstone. And also some more barrels up here as well, just to store some crafting stuff. Now you might see there are also a couple of blank spaces around the place, and I'm going to be putting in some pot plants with some flowers and just other details as well in those. And yeah, so that pretty much covers our starter base at the moment. I will be, of course, upgrading this over time. I might even make like a second floor or something like that. But yeah, I will eventually turn this into probably the mining area for the actual town, as it's a really cool spot for it as well, and the entrance design, like I mentioned, also fits. And I just want to quickly sleep and uh, show you guys something really cool that I found that was completely unplanned. So yeah, as I was building here, I was thinking like, I'm going to be having to run back and forth between that desert village that I found ages ago. It's probably about a thousand blocks away at this point, but something really cool is just over this hill right here. We actually have a savannah village right here, which is absolutely amazing. Having a village this close to your area is like, just like amazing. I'm actually so happy that this is here. So what I'm going to do right now is actually make sure that a few of these villages are locked inside as I don't want to be losing any of them to like uh, zombies or whatever. So let's head on in inside and take a look-see. Oh, that's cool. They got like a little dock as well. And now, uh, okay, thank God there's actually some villagers still alive in here. Okay. Oh, you're kidding me. There's a freaking smithing table right here. I could have just stolen that. But yeah, so I want to think I can, yeah, find the bell over here and that should send everyone inside. And then I'm just going to cover up the doors with some dirt blocks. Okay, we got one inside here. Thank frick. So we've got one confirmed safe. We only need two as we can obviously just breed them. Oh, there's a chest here. Okay, that is pure garbage. Well, wow. yeah, okay, we've got one here still. We can just close that up and he should be safe in there. Oh, there's another one. Yep, get in there, mate. Sweet, we're all good. Oh, there's another door. Okay, I did not realize that. Okay, there we go. We're all good now. So we've got three villagers confirmed safe. Make that four villagers. Okay, we're, we're good now. So now if any zombies come in here, we don't really have to worry about all of our villagers dying. We've got some safe inside. Okay, and so that pretty much covers everything I wanted to get done in the first episode of our hardcore series. Next episode, we will be getting some stuff done with this village over here. I want to make some enchanted diamond tools and stuff like that. And I probably will get started on some builds in our medieval town area as well. I also want to make some mob farms as well. I'm not sure how far along we'll get with all of that in the next episode, but I'll try and get as much done as I can. Oh, good morning, gamers. Oh, I should probably do this at uh, morning time, eh? <clears throat> okay, good morning, gamers, and welcome back to episode two. In this episode, I have a lot of plans that I want to get done. I'm not sure how much of that I'm going to be able to get done, but I want to start building our medieval town. And for that, I'm going to need a lot of wood, a lot of stone, and to get all of those, I'm going to need some better tools. So I'm going to go mining for some iron, and then I'm going to try and find as many diamonds as I can so I can get some diamond tools. I do have eight diamonds from the previous episode, which is pretty good, so I might actually end up making a pickaxe right now. There we go. Yeah, that just makes life a little bit easier. And so yeah, with all of that said, it's time to go mining. And like I said in the previous episode, I want my base to actually become the mine of the town. So what I'm going to do is probably start the mine right next to my bed, as this is where I'm going to want the mine to be. And I'll just cover it up later. So uh, yeah, let's just get started digging beside the bed here. That literally fucked me up. Holy shit, dude. One, two... Three. Any more? Any more for your boy? Oh, what? What? No way. What? There's some right next to it. Is that even possible? Am I cheating? What the hell? There's only one, but. Gee! There's more. No way. No way. That is just. That's. It's only one. Are you kidding me? Well, I might as well get some obsidian while I'm here for another portal at least. Alright, it's time to literally watch the footage back so I can figure out how the hell to get out of my, uh, predicament. This is pretty sad, honestly. I can't believe I've just completely forgotten where I went. I didn't use torches like I thought I would do and kind of mark like a little breadcrumb trail, you know? Boys, we made it. We made it back without watching back the footage. Okay, gamers, now that we're back up at the base, I've actually gone ahead and removed all of the trees that were out here and just tidied it up a little bit as I want to lay out a few of the things that I want to be building here. And firstly, starting off, I want to go over to where I want the front entrance to our little kingdom to be, which I think I want over here. So obviously we're going to be excavating a lot of dirt, so I'm going to be able to flatten all of this off and make it look a lot nicer eventually. But I'm feeling like I want the entrance to be right here. We could add a nice dock to the river here as if it's like a place where you'd arrive and then you can come into the town 
town. I also want to have a dock that's within the town as well, probably over here somewhere maybe. And yeah, so I think that this is just a pretty good spot for an entrance. I feel like I want it to be more so like in this area here. So I'm probably going to have to flatten a little bit of this off. So I'm just going to dig this out and uh, yeah, I'll flatten that off and I'll be back in just a second. Okay, and now with a decent area flattened out, I want to go ahead and add in our gate design. So this is going to be a very similar design to something that I've actually built before over on my Instagram page. Yo, editing Josh here. Yeah, as it turns out, my Instagram page got disabled for pretending to be someone else. And uh, it honestly looks like I won't be getting it back as Instagram hasn't really done anything about it. And obviously I wasn't pretending to be anyone else, so it's definitely a mistake. So I guess rip two years of builds and uh, 156,000 followers. So it's a pretty simple design. It also has a wall that goes with it, which is awesome. So it pretty much consists of two little mini towers on the sides. And then in the middle, it has like a bit of a gap, like obviously for the entrance. And then it has a tower on the other side as well. So this is kind of the base of the tower. I'm going to extend all of these up to be six blocks high. So one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. Now I'm going to jump back down. Now in the middle of all of these, I'm going to be placing some stripped spruce wood blocks. Obviously these aren't stripped, but now they are. I'm also going to do this on the other side as well. Oh yeah, and I just remembered a lot of you guys asked for the seed in the first episode in the comments. So uh, here you go. That's the seed. I'm also going to put this in the description. And also here's my coordinates as well. If you wanted to build like in the same area as me or whatever. Okay, now with those two tower outline thingies done, let's next move on to the kind of inside area, the actual part where like the gate's going to be. Now I just remembered, like I, tr I tried to get everything I needed for this, but of course I forget something. I need some bloody fence gates. There we go. So we're going to be having some fence gates here and then I'm not really sure what I'm going to put on the sides. Maybe just some more fences like that. That looks fine. Then on the front here, we're going to be adding some upside down spruce stairs like so on both sides. And then we're going to connect them up using some spruce trap doors. And then we're also going to put some more spruce trap doors below those. And then on top of our stairs here, we're going to be putting some spruce slabs. And then we're also going to add another trap door above this trap door to make it look a little bit like thicker. Now this is where some scaffolding would be good. I haven't actually made any yet because uh, you know how it is. And so up here, we're going to be putting some slabs in between all of these. Let's do the same on this side as well. I'm not sure if I want to put one on this side as I might actually kind of I don't know, you know? I think I might actually put some more trapdoors kind of in this section here as it might look weird if we put slabs because they're going to be kind of on the same level as this. So I feel like some trapdoors on there is going to look fine. And yeah, we can probably just leave it like that. That honestly looks nice and sweet. Now at the tops of all of these, we're going to be putting some fences. I'm not actually going to put fences on the sides as we're going to be extending some walls across. I'm just going to be putting these on the front and back. And then underneath these, we're going to have some lanterns hanging from them as well. Now on my original design, I had some more stone slabs on the bottom here, but I think what I want to do instead is actually have some azaleas because the wall design has some azaleas as well, and I feel like this is going to fit in a little bit better. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Now, I don't actually know how to get more of these azaleas, so I think if you bone meal them, you get more. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm just going to leave it like that for now. Now, yeah, so that's pretty much it for our actual gate design. It's pretty simple, pretty small. That's exactly how I want it, to be honest. I don't want like 30 episodes to be taken up of kind of building freaking walls everywhere. I'll probably do all of that off camera, to be honest, or I'll just make it like a time lapse or something. But yeah, so that's it for the gatehouse. I think I'm going to build one wall to the right of it here just to kind of show you how it's going to look. I'm of course going to go sleep first. Oh no, this is a problem. What the hell? Where do these boys come from? They're right outside my base and I do not have my bow on me because I needed the space. That's actually like, that's actually scary because I know these boys do some damage. Oh, there's an, oh, oh blah, 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 blah. they do so much damage to me. Oh, <laughs> like that's like this guy's got an enchanted one. I'm honestly tempted to just dig into my base from like here or something Or we can just YOLO send it and hope that we get inside. I think we're just gonna YOLO send it because it's getting dark and I'm scared All right ah, Okay, we're good. Holy crap. Wait, do they not attack? Oh, they attack. Okay <laughs> Jesus mate. All right. Well, we're gonna have to deal with that in the morning and that's a bit annoying <laughs> See the hands sticking through <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, this is actually... Oh, actually, something cool we can do is open up this and use this to just attack them through it. Oh, yeah. Wait, where'd they go? What the hell? Oh, hey, buddy. Oh, okay. All right, we need a new sword. Uh, we can actually probably make a diamond sword. Hell, yeah. All right, come here, boys. Come on. Your time has come. Oh, they are scary. Oh, okay. They don't actually do that much damage. I'm going to do like half a heart. I thought they'd do more, to be honest. There's one. There's two. Get out of here, mate. You guys are trash, honestly. What was that? Well, cool. we got a uh, an ominous banner. I'm just going to chuck that there. Why not? <laughs> and actually, I want to see if we bone meal one of these azaleas. I want to see if that gives us more. I'm pretty sure it does. So let's just test it out right here. Chuck one of them down. Bone meal. Oh, it makes a tree. 
Okay. Maybe it's moss. I think it might be moss blocks if we do it, then we can get more. Do I have any moss blocks? Yes, I do. We'll just chuck this in right here. And then bone meal. Yes, there we go. But oh well, we only need four. That's fine. We actually only need two for the wall. Now let's finally head back over and create the wall design. All right, so we're going to need some spruce logs here. So we're going to be placing three across like this and extending these side ones up to be four blocks high, just like so. Then in the middle, we're going to place a couple of fences and then another spruce log on top of them. I'm going to need some more dirt. We're also going to be uh, stripping all of these. Then to the right here, we're going to be adding in another pillar of some stone brick. I need to get out my bloody dirt again. All the way up here like so. And then to the left, we're going to be adding in some slabs. I think I'll make all of these out of stone. And that'll go across like so. Underneath here, we're going to be adding some spruce stairs. And then some trapdoors in between those and below those as well. Then all along the bottom, we're actually going to replace all of these grass blocks with some coarse dirt. And then we're going to chuck in a single azalea right here with a lantern on top. And then ideally, we'll be adding some flowers on these spots as well. I might actually just go and grab some flowers. I think there's a whole bunch around here somewhere. Here we go. We've got a dandelion and a poppy. And yeah, there we go. So that's pretty much how the front of the wall is going to look. We're just going to be extending this same design off to the right and to the left and just pretty much encasing the entire area with this design. Now, I of course need to fix up the back here. And uh, I'll do that in my own time because it's basically the same thing as the front. But yeah, so that's pretty much it for the gate and the wall design. All right, and so now with our gate and our wall done, what I think I'm going to do now is find a couple of spots where I want to add some buildings and chuck those in. I also wanted to quickly ask, do you guys prefer like a time lapse of me building or what you just saw with me building this? Kind of like explaining it as I go. Feel free to leave a comment with which one you prefer. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll get started in the time lapse right now. So you can actually compare both of the uh, styles, I guess. All right, so I decided on this location right here for my first house, and I also wanted to just start off with a pretty simple and basic building as well. So this one will probably house maybe like two to three villages or something like that. I'll probably just cram in as many beds as I can. And yeah, this is pretty much just a basic villager house. Now you might be thinking this design looks pretty simple, but this is the most basic house out of all of the ones I'm going to be creating. There's also going to be multiple variations of like just the regular village houses as well. For the next one, I decided to do something a little bit bigger than the previous one. This one's more of like a boarding house or something like that, where we can hold a whole bunch of villages. So on the inside, we're going to have multiple sectioned off rooms. And then in the top floor, I'm just going to cram in as many beds as I can. There's not really a lot of room up there for adding in like separated rooms. So it's just going to be beds like kind of open plan, you know? And so for the final build of the video, I decided to also just add in a blacksmith for the hell of it. We're of course going to need a whole bunch of different builds for all of the different jobs that the villagers can have. So we're going to need a blacksmith, a dock, farm fields, an archery range, a library, and like heaps more of course. But so for the blacksmith, we kind of have this outside area where we're going to be adding a whole bunch of details. And of course it starts raining here as well, which I do apologize for. Oh. 
But yeah, so on the right side here, we're adding in a nice kind of blacksmith smelter thingy. We're also going to add a chimney on the roof for that. Then we're adding in some anvils and just some extra details around the place to make it look a little bit more lively on the outside. And now onto the interior, it is pretty basic. I mean, no one's ever gonna really see inside here. So we're just adding in some nice kind of tool racks and then just some chests and barrels as well. And uh, yeah, so that pretty much does it for the second episode of the Hardcore series. Gamers, you know what I'm sick of? My tools being absolute dog shit. So in this episode, I'm gonna get a library building created so we can move in some villages and get some enchanting books. Then I want to upgrade our crappy sugarcane farm and crop farm into some fully automatic ones. So let's get started. All right, so for this library, we're gonna need a whole bunch of resources as I'm gonna make this pretty big. So I've grabbed pretty much everything I've got. I've got more stone smelting. I know I'm gonna need more. And I've found the perfect spot, which is over here. It's nice and flat and a big open area as well. So we're not gonna have to do too much terraforming, which is a big bonus. Also, I'm really sick of taking this path to get over this ravine as going over there takes too long so I'm gonna make a bridge in between here as well eventually but yeah so this spot right here is where I want to make our library so first I'm just gonna have to clear out all of this grass which is probably gonna take forever oh, I probably could have brought a water bucket eh? Oh, I have one it's actually not full is there any water around here that'd be that'd be pretty good oh yeah there's some down here hell yeah and this should make getting rid of all the grass a lot quicker and easier. Okay, now that we've got a decent area cleared out, let's get started making the outline. So the basic layout that I want to go with is kind of a U shape. And I think I want each of the actual like sticky out bits for the U to be able to fit an enchanting table. So I'm going to make these maybe five wide and then enchanting table books. Yeah, this is going to be a pretty big build, honestly. What is that? Oh, it's a, my horse. Oh my God, I completely forgot about this horse. I put it in a hole because I tamed it and I don't have a saddle. So I forgot you need a saddle to actually steer him. He's just been in that hole this whole time, that poor guy. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, we finally hit 100,000 subscribers, which is honestly, like, it's crazy. I, I didn't expect to reach that until, like, late next year sometime or something, and it's honestly, it's really crazy that we hit that so quickly. And I am honestly eternally grateful for you guys and all of the recent support. It's been really crazy. But uh, yeah, continuing on with our build here. So as you can see, I'm going with this general kind of layout. It's just a U-shaped building. It's going to be a little bit smaller than I thought it might be actually, which is probably good. I don't want this to take forever to build. So now let's raise all of these up and I'm going to need a whole lot more wood for this. It's time to go chop down some more big spruce trees in a minute. There we go. I've ran out of wood, but you can see the basic kind of layout that I'm going with here. I'm going to need a whole lot more wood to go in between all of these uh, pillars. So uh, just give me a minute. I'm going to go chop down some more trees. Okay, there we go. There's the final layout for the uh, pillars, I guess, of the base. I mean, of the library. Until I make too many tutorial videos. Okay, now onto the wall designs. I'm thinking uh, just something like this. Then at the tops here, we're going to chuck in some upside down stone brick stairs. And then I'm going to put some fences in here for the windows. I should also probably showcase the uh, design that we're putting in here before we get started with the time lapse. So I'm thinking either this and we put two lint... Nah, Nah, that definitely looks whack. What the hell? Nah, no, we're not doing that. We're just gonna stick with what we've done with all of the other builds, which is a fence in the center, and then we've got fence gates on the sides, and then we're gonna chuck a lantern below that. I just see an enchanted spider. Like, what is that? Why are these guys enchanted? You have like a potion effect going on. Is there a witch or something I'm guessing? Do they power up other mobs? What does this game become? Like, what is that? Man, there's no witches around. That is weird. I've never seen that before in my life. Back to bed, too scary for me. All right, so now it's time to get started on the roofs. And I'll probably do this as a time-lapse as well, just cause uh, it's pretty boring to be honest. <laughs> All 
Alright, now with the roofs done, I feel like these front two are a little bit too kind of tall. So I think what I'm going to do is actually make them just slab roofs. So instead of transitioning to stairs here, I'm just going to keep going with the slabs. And that should get it looking a little bit more mellow compared to this. And uh, yeah, we'll see how that looks in just a second. Alright, and yeah, that's looking a whole lot better now. Now what I want to do is add in our pathway that's going to go right down the center. And then I'm going to get some blocks to add in for our little gardens that are going to be on the sides here. I'll probably just do that in my own time as it's a bit boring, so... Yeah, the next thing I'm probably gonna get done now is the interior. Oh my god, what? Bro, why do these guys keep coming here? Look at them, they're staring at me ominously. I don't like it. I'm probably gonna have to deal with these guys again, man. Like, what is their problem? Like, if these guys spawn in my village and kill my villagers, I'm actually gonna cry. All right, so I just went and did some mining to get some obsidian so I can make an enchanting table to chuck in here. I eventually probably maybe wanna get two, maybe one in each corner, but yeah, it seems those guys are gone now. I guess they just despawned, thankfully. But yeah, so now we can head on inside and start off with the interior design. Firstly, I wanna figure out where I wanna put the stairs, and I'm thinking maybe like, a main kind of central staircase. We'll probably just chuck it here for now and I'll change it later if I really need to. All right, now with all of the ceiling done, it's time to do the floor. I want this floor to be a little bit more cozy, so I'm simply just adding a ring of stone around the outside kind of layer of the floor. And then for the inside, I'll be adding in some spruce planks. Okay, there we go. Now I'm gonna add in a couple of lanterns around the place. Bang, bang, bang. Okay, and so these little sections over here are where the lecterns are gonna go. I've only got two for now because I need to to make a sugarcane farm and we'll get to that shortly. Now what I want to do is bring over a couple of villagers to chuck them in here so that I can get some enchanting books, preferably mending. I really want to get that so I don't have to remake some more diamond tools because uh, my axe and my pickaxe are running low. So now I need to figure out a way to get the villagers over here. I'm probably just going to do a boat. It's going to take forever so I don't really have enough iron to make like a minecart trail or anything. All right, so once I actually started thinking about how long it would take to uh, use the boat method, I just went ahead and bit the bullet and used all my iron to make some rails. So now it's time to go over and greet our villagers, chuck one or two in this minecart, and bring them all the way over here to the library. Okay, I think I've actually had a change of plans. So what I've done is made a little pit here and chucked our one guy in here. And what I'm going to do is get one more villager, bring them here, and then make this like my breeding chamber, I guess, for now. Because uh, doing that whole thing as many times as I need, like villages and stuff, it's going to suck actual anus. So I think, yeah, I'm just going to bring two here, breed them, and then kind of just release them into our village once we've got the fence set up and everything. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and bring in our second villager right now. All right, now using some wheat that I may have liberated from their original village. Uh, I have a bunch of bread here, so I can start chucking this in, and they should pick it up, and then they should start breeding, hopefully. That's the plan, at least. All right, gamers, now it's time to do my least favorite thing ever in this entire game, which is head to the nether. I wanna make a fully automatic sugarcane farm, and for that, we need nether quartz for the observer blocks. So we're gonna have to make a really quick trip to the nether. I'm praying that this is not the end of the series right here, because it very well could be. All right, here we are at the hole. I already see some nether quartz. We're in the green, mate. We are in the absolute green here. Okay, so let's get up here and get this juicy stuff. All right, so we've got 19 nether quartz. So that should literally be enough for quite a while. And uh, yeah, so that's literally it. We're done now in the nether. I'm very happy with the way that turned out. So uh, let's get back home and out of this hell hole. All right, so now that I've got everything I need, I'm going to start making a fully automatic sugarcane farm. And I think the spot that I want to build this is right here. Time to excavate a little bit of an area and get started. All right, so I want this to be able to hold nine sugar canes like in a row. So we're gonna just start right here, I guess. Now, as I'm building this, I will just say I am a strong advocate of making like buildings for your farms and stuff. Instead of just hiding them away underground or building them above ground and they look like ugly as hell, I like to kind of encase them in like a little build and have them be showcased. Oh, I'm gonna need a whole bunch of glass for this as well. Okay, I'm gonna have to get that later. But yeah, so now I think I'm going to maybe put them on this layer. Then we're gonna have to put part of the wall walls on here so that our water doesn't leak out. Okay, now we should be able to put all of our sugar canes on like so. Okay, now directly next to these, we're going to put a row like so. Then above these, we're going to put all of our pistons. And then above all of the pistons, we're going to be putting some observers just like this all the way across. Now, I can't exactly remember how to do this. I think it's like this. And then underneath, we have to put another layer. 
fucking bloody click. My goodness. And then we put some redstone dust on all of these blocks like so. I'm pretty sure that'll work. We can test it out just by putting a block in front of one of these observers and yeah, there we go. It's working perfectly. Hell yeah. Now underneath all of this, we need to add in our rail system to actually collect all of the blocks or all of the sugarcane, I should say. So on the left and right side, we're going to have to put some powered rails and then we're going to connect them up with some regular rails. And right in the center is where I'm going to put my hopper that connects up to our chest. So I'm going to want the chest to probably be out here. And of course it starts raining. Bloody hell. So yeah, we're just going to put a temporary block right here here so that we can oh my goodness how am i gonna get in there we're gonna have to destroy these blocks as well now we can chuck our hopper on right here remove this block put our shit back and i just realized i'm gonna need more hoppers if i want my chest to go all the way out oh my god okay there we go so now we've extended it out a little bit i'm gonna put my chest right here it's a little bit far down in the ground so what i'm gonna do is actually just remove this like so i'm actually put that back there and then i'm gonna make like a little staircase thing around it just so it doesn't look like it's like so far in the ground now we can chuck our rail back on and now we also need to power these two rails at the ends and to do that i'm just gonna I'm just gonna whack some levers on. Yeah. Now we can put our minecart with a hopper on here and it should just go back and forth continuously between these two points. Now I'm gonna have to go get a bunch of sand to make some glass to encase this entire thing. So uh, I'll be back in a minute. All right, I've got my glass now. I think it should be enough, hopefully. And I've also realized that this is still too close. So I'm gonna have to move it out once again. I've made another hopper. So let's just chuck that in and then I'm gonna add in our chest back over here. I also wanna change these stairs to stone stairs because it's more of like a floor material, I guess. And it just kind of makes more sense to me. All right, now I need to figure out a a front kind of design. It's a little bit difficult using glass and stuff, but we should be able to figure something out. I think the first thing I want to do is add in our kind of roof and like pillar design that we have on all of our other houses. So let's connect all of these up and add our little sticking out bits and stuff like that as well. Okay, then I think we'll try maybe something like this. I'm not really sure if this is uh, what I'm wanting. And I think I might actually make these into glass panes to put in here as well, as that's going to look a little bit better. So let's go grab that. Okay, now let's see how this looks with some glass panes in these big kind of open areas. We're going to chuck some more in here as well. And then also on this side, of course. And yeah, I actually really like the way that looks. It kind of blends in with the rest of the buildings, which is exactly what I want. Now let's add on our kind of little front thingy designs. I don't really know what they're called. Uh, the things where the lanterns hang off of like this. Okay, now I've just realized that the back is, uh, yeah, it's like this. I can't really cover this up. And we've got this big gap in the front. I don't know how I didn't really realize this before, but I'm going to have to shift the whole build back. Or actually, I could just shift the mechanism forward. That, that'll that probably be easier, I reckon. So I'm just going to quickly do that right now. Okay, there we go. Now with all of that fixed up, we now have another problem that we have to deal with, which is our glass panes here connecting up with the dirt below. And to fix that, I have just a simple idea, and that is that we're going to just replace those with some glass blocks like this, and then we're also going to place some more glass blocks on the top to even it out. Just so it kind of looks like a pattern that was like intended, I guess, even though it wasn't. I would prefer to do the glass blocks kind of vertically instead of horizontally like this, but oh well. I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do, you know? All right, and so now with all of the walls done, it's time to get onto the roof and make the roof. So this is gonna be pretty much exactly the same as the roofs over there. Nothing too special, just like that. It's a little bit of a smaller one because instead of it being five wide, this one's only three wide. So it's only a little bit of a smaller roof, I guess. All right, and there we go. We're now fully done with our fully automatic sugarcane farm. Now for one final test, we can just remove part of the wall here and maybe grow up a couple of these sugar canes just manually, you know? And as we grow those, you should see that these should disappear. They've already disappeared, which means they've been collected by the minecart down below. And if we come over to our chest here, we should see we have a couple of sugar canes in here. Yes, we do. Sweet as. So this is going to make making bookshelves and stuff for the library a whole lot quicker and easier. I don't have to go and manually farm a whole bunch, which is what I was doing before. You can see my little farm down there. And yeah, this is just going to run as we kind of just do whatever we want. And we don't really have to worry about it, which is awesome. And now I quickly want to check to see if our villagers have progressed any further. Last time I checked, there was no babies. <gasps> we got two babies! Hell yeah, boys. We've got two babies. That is awesome. Once they become adults, we can uh, move one or two of these out into the library, try and get a mending book, and yeah, we'll see how we go. Alright, so while our villagers are breeding away over there... Oh, we even have an iron golem now. Hell yeah. I want to make a fully automatic crop farm, and for that, we do need some villagers, so we're gonna have to pull some from over there eventually when they've uh, grown up, I guess. And so the spot for this crop farm that I want to make is over here. There's a nice flat spot where not too much work has to be done, which is
is right here. I'm probably going to fill in this first layer with dirt. And uh, yeah, I might have to do a little bit of excavating. But yeah, we'll see how we go. All right, so now with our big area filled in, I need to figure out how I want to lay this out. And uh, yeah, so I'm actually going to start off by placing in the mechanism. And this design is actually thanks to Chapman Farms on YouTube. So be sure to go and check that out. I've got his channel linked in the description. So our two fields are going to be on the left and right here. And we're going to have one guy in the center that they are going to like throw food to, I guess. So I'm going to put a fence gate here. And then this is going to be like our walkway down so that we can actually grab the crops that have been harvested. I might actually make a pathway on both sides just for ease of use. There we go. So now we can make our kind of fields sectioned off with some fences going around this way and then also on this side. Okay, and there we go. There's the layout for our two farms. So now we're going to add in our little mechanism in the center. So this is where our village is going to be that's going to be collecting the crops from the farmers that are going to be out here. And to prevent him from moving out, we're going to have to put a spruce trap door right here. So we're going to have to put a temporary block right here and then a spruce trap door on this block. We're going to have to do the same on this side, of course. And so that allows us to walk underneath, but it doesn't let the actual villagers leave. Uh, and actually messed up, these blocks here are actually supposed to be hoppers. And that's going to be what actually collects our items. So I'm going to destroy these two blocks as well. These are going to be our barrels that are going to hold the items. So let's put those two in, and then we're going to put our hoppers that connect up into those barrels here. And then on top of these hoppers, we're going to be putting two rails and then two minecarts with hoppers as well. And so the whole idea behind this is the farmers will get an excess of food, and then they will throw that into this villager in the center. They do that so that they can keep breeding but this minecart with the hopper and the hopper below will prevent the crops thrown from the farmer to the villager in here so it'll stop the villager from actually collecting them and instead it'll go into the hopper and into this barrel and i guess that's the whole idea behind it if you want a more in-depth kind of look at how this is made be sure to check out chapman farms video uh, and now i just realized i need a way in and out of these actual farms so i'm going to add some extra spruce fence gates on the sides here and yeah so that's pretty much all of the uh design done now what we need to do is actually add in everything for the farm so we need to add the composter which is the job site block. And then we need to also put in enough water and light for all of the crops. And then we need to, of course, move our farmers in. And uh, so I'm just going to get everything done for the farms right now. I'll probably do it as a time lapse just because uh, it's a bit boring, I guess. And so that's it. That's the full layout of the farms done. Eventually, I do want to replace these torches with some lanterns instead. However, I am definitely running out of iron. I've only got like 12 left. I need to do a big mining trip. So yeah, now we need to bring over three villagers from our pit. We need one in each farm and then one in the center. So uh, yeah, let's do that right now. Okay, now with every villager in their positions, what we can go ahead and do is destroy the minecarts that they're in. These guys should run straight to the composter. Oh, Jesus, okay. And he should become a farmer, hopefully. There we go. Heading to the other side, we should be able to do the same thing for this guy. I'm going to push him in a little bit further so he doesn't spawn on top of the freaking fence. There we go. Okay, and now with the middle guy, all we need to do is just destroy the minecart that he's in. And he teleported up here. That's not very good. Please get in there. Oh, um, okay. That's not good. Okay, we're just gonna try and... There we go. Okay, we got him. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. <laughs> Alright, now what we gotta do is just get him over to here. Okay, he's in. Okay, we're good, we're good. Holy crap, that was stressful, to say the least. But yeah, we should be able to just leave this now, and we should come back to a full crop field, and hopefully some crops as well in our barrels in due time. Alright, and so now I'm gonna have to do that whole exact same thing. I've got two villages here, and I'm gonna bring them over to the library in hopes of getting a mending book so that I can start using my diamond tools again. As you can see, I've switched over to some iron stuff. And yeah, so I'm gonna have to leave this episode here. It is already pretty long enough at this point. Hopefully next episode you should see some enchantments on my tools. I'm gonna bring these guys over here and yeah, like I said, hopefully get a mending book and stuff like that. Gamers, I spent several minutes of my life trying to get a mending book trade, and I finally got it. Oh, f*** yes, you little mongrel. Now I of course need to buy it, and I don't really have a lot of emeralds, and the best way I know of to get more is to use a Fletcher villager and trade sticks to them. And so, that means we need a brand new build to hold those Fletchers. So, let's get started. All right, so after waiting about 20 minutes for the rain to go away, we can finally get started. Okay, so the spot that I want to make this archery range, I'm thinking, is over here. So as you can see, we've got a nice flat area here. I'm probably going to have to extend this little bit of land out a little bit, so I've got some dirt with me to do that. 
Okay, and there we go. That's looking pretty good to me. Now let's go ahead and add in the layout of all of the pillars. And for this one, I'm thinking of a pretty small kind of building and probably in like a rectangular shape. So I'm going to do something like this. Then for this right side, I only want this to be one story tall. So I'm going to raise this up just a little bit, just like that. And then for this left side here, I want this to actually be two stories tall. So let's just uh, raise the pillars up again. All right, so there's the finished layout of all of the pillars. Now let's go ahead and add in all of the walls. And so these are all going to be pretty similar to all of the other builds that I've made. We're just going to be using some stone brick on the sides and then in the center here We're going to put an upside down stone brick stair block and then also a spruce fence for the window Okay, now with all of the walls done You might be wondering why I've left these two blank and that's because we're going to be adding some fences on this side And then this side is actually going to be open and this is going to be like the archery range kind of part So we're going to be adding in some fences like so then on this part right here We're actually going to be removing these ones that I've placed placing some spruce logs and then some spruce stairs on top of those And this is just for some extra little decorations. We're going to be chucking some item frames on here with some bows inside of those and it just kind of looks like a little holding rack for the bows then on the inside part here we're going to be clearing out all this crap and then placing a single strip spruce log right here with a target on top of it and yeah now you can see this is pretty much like our archery range section now just for a little extra detail in here i'm just going to add in a bit of coarse dirt to the ground just to make it look like it's been kind of worn in i guess and there we go that looks a lot better now with that little bit done let's move on to the roofs and for these roofs i wanted them to each point different directions and I just feel like that adds a little bit more visual interest to them and uh, yeah Okay, and so that's pretty much it for all of the exterior of the build now It's time to head on inside and add in the interior which is of course pretty small So the first thing of course is to add in our nice stone floor and then on the right side here We're going to actually extend this stone floor out a little bit further And then we're gonna add some spruce fences on top of these then let's add in a couple of our job site blocks Let's just place two in like that and then we're gonna add in our ladder as well that goes up to the second floor and then we can just quickly add in our ceiling as well and now uh, yeah i don't think i'm actually going to put anything up here it's mainly just for decoration i don't think villagers can climb ladders anyway so it's kind of just pointless and yeah so now that's pretty much it for the entire archery range one more thing i wanted to quickly do is just add in an extra fence around here with a fence gate so that when we put our villager in here he can't really leave i will of course remove this once we've got our entire fence set up all right now with our villager here we can go ahead and close up the gate and let him out of his uh, minecart here and he should hopefully run inside and get the fletcher job thing. Oh no, I just realized he can jump out. Okay, let's uh, let's quickly do that. Uh, I'll fix this up later. Don't worry about it. Okay, why isn't this guy getting the job? Come on, man. Get in there. Get your job, buddy. Please. Yes? Okay, there we go. Sweet as. Okay, so this isn't what we want. Okay, we need to pretty much do what I had been doing for ages with the uh, librarians, which is changing his trades. There we go. So now we have 32 sticks for one emerald. This is the exact trade that we want. All right, so after chopping down a tree or two, I quickly want to check how much we get from a full stack of spruce logs. So I'm going to have to go ahead and, of course, craft these into sticks. All right, so now let's just start trading these and uh, see how many emeralds we get from a full stack of logs. Oh, I forgot they have, like, this trade restock thing. I might actually end up getting another villager in here just so we can have two going at once. But also... So it looks like we get 16 emeralds from a full stack of logs. That means we only really need two stacks of logs in order to get a mending book. I'm pretty sure it was 30 emeralds or something like that. Okay, so now we should be able to get our mending book, hopefully. I think it's this guy right here. Yes, it is. So here we go. We're going to chuck in our 34 emeralds. Wait, what? Oh, you're kidding. Of course, I need a book as well. You... You absolute pain in my ass. Okay, now we're back with a book in hand. Now we should finally be able to get our mending book. So let's chuck everything in and there we go. Finally, holy crap, we have gotten it. So now I'm going to go ahead and throw this onto our diamond axe so we can chop down a whole bunch more trees. And yeah, I'm going to chop down enough trees for us to get mending on all of our tools so that we never have to worry about them breaking. Actually, I just had an idea. Instead of adding the mending book on, I think I want to enchant this first so that we get a whole bunch of hopefully decent enchantments. So I've got my enchanting table. I also have nine bookshelves. I should be able to make a whole bunch more because of our automatic sugarcane farm that's been going this whole time. We should hopefully have at least like a stack or so of sugarcane in the chest here. Okay, we actually have two and almost the half stacks. That is pretty decent actually. So now let's go ahead and just craft as many bookshelves as we can. Okay, I'm pretty sure 23 bookshelves should be enough. So let's go back to the library and place that in. Oh, actually just before we go in there, I wanted to quickly check on how our farms are doing and holy crap, they have gotten everything planted. That is actually insane. Let's see if we got any spare crops in the back. Jesus. 
Holy crap. Okay. We are definitely more than good with crops at the moment. So all of these carrots are pretty much going to be going back into villager breeding. And then eventually I'll be making some golden carrots as well just for my own food. So I don't have to be living off steak anymore. But yeah, now let's head on inside here and place in our enchanting table. This is of course going to go in this corner right here. So let's chuck our enchanting table in and then start placing all of the bookshelves. Okay. And so we actually needed a lot less bookshelves than I thought we did. This is already level 30. And of course I need lapis lazuli. Oh my God. Time to head back. Back to the base, grab some of that, and come all the way back here. Give me some of that lapis lazuli, lapis lazuli, lapagus lazuli. I'm brain dead. What the? F okay, now we're back with lapis in hand this time. Let's chuck that in here. Chuck our diamond axe in and see what we get. We got fortune two. I don't know if that's really useful for an axe, but let's just pray that we get actually like efficiency on here. Okay, that's actually goaded. Holy crap. Is that like the best that you can get? Fortune two, unbreaking three, efficiency four. I'm pretty sure efficiency goes up to five, but Jesus Christ, that is pretty good. So now let's go ahead and chuck our mending book onto this bad boy, and hopefully it doesn't cost too many levels. Oh yeah, and I forgot the enchanting doesn't take all of your levels up anymore. I only lost like three levels. I was expecting that to take uh, the full 30. I mean, you can really tell how long it's been since I played survival like properly. Okay, and now to put mending onto this axe, it is going to cost us well, only two levels. Okay. <laughs> I was expecting that to cost a whole lot more. Uh, I mean, we got some levels to spare. What should we name our axe? I don't know what Chadwick Axeman is supposed to be, but that's what our axe is now called. Okay, so now you probably have noticed that my durability is only at 17. So that means I'm going to have to go probably kill some mobs and uh, like quickly swap to this axe and collect the XP so that we can uh, repair it. So it's time to do a little bit of uh, nighttime slaying with the boys. And the, by the boys, I mean myself. Man, where's the f mobs at? Honestly, where? Okay, there's a spider. Okay, wow, this is actually going to take a lot longer than I thought it would. Holy crap. Okay, it actually only costs two levels to add a diamond into this. So I think I am going to do that because this is really going to take forever. Now with our crazy new axe, it's time to chop down a bunch of trees and get enough emeralds for a mending book on all our tools. Okay, now that we have enough emeralds to buy three mending books, one for each of the rest of our tools, I want to quickly just buy them. Okay, there we go. There's our three mending books. And I also wanted to enchant all of our tools, of course, before we put these books on, because I'm pretty sure it's more expensive if you do it that way. But I don't think I have enough levels to do all of my tools. So I'm just going to start off with the pickaxe first. So let's just enchant that. Oh, that's pretty good. I'm breaking three efficiency, three fortune two. That is actually really good. Hell yeah. That's perfect. And then it's either the shovel or the sword. I'm not entirely sure. I think I'm going to go with the sword first, actually, because it is our main, like, kind of attack method, I guess. So, yeah, let's just enchant that. Unbreaking three, sharpness four. That is perfectly fine with me. And right, we actually only need one more level to get level 30 once again. So we might as well just go kill a couple of mobs and get that level while we're uh, out here at nighttime. Okay, now that we're back up to level 30, let's enchant our last thing, which is our diamond shovel. Silk touch, unbreaking three, efficiency four. That is very good. Hell to the yes. Now it's time to head back home and slap the mending book onto each of these. And our tool situation is pretty much sorted at that point. I was honestly expecting it to take a lot longer to do all of that. I mean, don't get me wrong. It did take a long time doing all of that stuff, but I am very glad that it is all done now. Oh, that means we also need to name all of our tools. Okay, give me a minute. Okay, so for the whole lineup, we firstly got Big Dog Brungus. <laughs> General Stab, Chadwick Axman, and Shovel Chungus. I really don't understand where these names come from. I just kind of thought up of them on the spot. So honestly, just don't even ask. All right, now the next thing I want to do is make our arrival dock for our front entrance over here. So yeah, I'm thinking this spot right here, we've got like a nice kind of corner section and that pretty much leads right up to our entrance right here and we'll make a pathway that links them up, of course. So yeah, I think I'm going to be starting it probably right here in this little section. So with all my docks, I usually have pillars spaced apart by three blocks and then I also also have the dock three blocks wide. So I'm going to place our pillars like so, and then I'm going to put the spruce slabs on the same layer as the water like so, so that we can actually place blocks on top of the dock. I mean, it does look nice having the slabs on this layer, but it means you can't really place things or else they'll be like floating and it just kind of looks weird. So for practicality, we're going to be putting the slabs on this layer here. What the hell? Dude, get out of the way, brother. So I'm not sure how far I want this to go out, but let's just add in the pillars now. Okay, I think I actually don't want this pillar here, and I think I want this to be where the boats kind of park up. So now what I'm going to do is destroy these. Actually, my bad, we need those on. And then we're going to extend this out on the sides and then 
bring it out this way again. And this is kind of making like a U shape. And this is so that boats can like park up comfortably. And yeah, it's just like the boat docking area, I guess. You can even fish off the ends of these if you really wanted to. I'm probably never going to, but uh, the idea is there, you know? Okay, and so this looks cool, but it's a little bit bland. So now what we're gonna do to add in some details is put some trap doors in between the pillars like so. And then on top of these, we're gonna be placing a fence in the middle and then some spruce fence gates on the sides, similar to kind of what we do on the sides of the houses up there. And then we can either put lanterns on top of the fences or on top of these. So we could do that and then put slabs on top of these. Yeah, I think we're gonna do that. That looks pretty good. But in this section right here, I think I'm actually going to add in a little building because I want this dock to be just a bit more than just a dock. So it's gonna be kind of like a trading post, I guess. Now, I don't know if I want the building to be here or here. It's gonna look nicer from inside the village if we come out and see the building here. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So instead of adding our trap doors here, I'm going to instead extend the dock out this way. And I'm gonna put another set of pillars right here. So only spaced apart by one block instead of three, because I don't want it to stick out too far. And then this here will be like kind of the base of the platform for the building. Okay, and there's the frame of the build. Now I'm going to go ahead and just add in all of the floor and everything. And uh, yeah, I'll do that as a time lapse because it is a bit boring. Right, and there we go. So there's the build created. And now after looking at it, I feel like this build is way too big for this dock. So I feel like we're gonna have to make the dock maybe five blocks wide or just a lot longer and a lot bigger. I think the dock would actually look pretty weird being five blocks wide. So yeah, let's just actually extend the dock out a little bit further and maybe have it branch off over this way as well for another little platform of sorts. And there we go. So that side's just a little bit longer now and it looks a little bit more proportionate to the size of the house. And then let's maybe add in a little extra U section over here as well. Hopefully it actually fits in. Might actually have to just do it on one side because then we're gonna block off part of the world. I mean, we could actually just terraform part of the uh, land here. So let's just do that. Let's just get rid of a bunch of this dirt and make this a little bit more open here. Okay, and there we go. That's looking a little bit more open now and it looks a bit more natural as well. And now what I'm gonna do is just finish adding in all of the details for all of our fence designs, lanterns, and our slabs on top of the pillars here. All right, now with all of our extra details added in, it's time for some finishing touches. So towards the end of the docks here, we're gonna add in some barrels just to kind of look like some storage for like some fishing and stuff like that and some boats as well. Maybe chuck another barrel over here and actually get rid of this crafting table. And then inside of our build here, we're actually going to maybe add in a couple of more barrels. I'm gonna have to craft a couple more. And let's just kind of stack these up in the corner and then let's add in a bunch of chests on the back, something like that, just kind of like a scattered design, I guess. And maybe another barrel or two over here as well. Let's add in a hanging lantern from the ceiling. Now on the sides here, I feel like I wanna add in some fences that come down like this. It just kind of frames the countertop a little bit more, I guess. All right, now the finishing touch for our dock is to slap some boats into these open sections. And then I'm also gonna chuck a couple in this chest just for, uh, I mean, I don't really know why. I'm probably never gonna use them. I'll always just use these. I probably won't even use these to be honest, but uh, yeah, it's the thought that counts, you know? We're adding a bit of story to our world. Now I'm gonna run inside before I get sniped by some absolute demon demons out here. Oh my god, okay. Get away from me, buddy. So I just got mending on all my tools, but it's taking way too long to refill the durability. Now my new plan is to create a giant mob farm in our village, so let's get started. All right, so for this mob farm to fit the style of our village, I think I'm going to make probably a giant castle. And for that, I'm going to need a crap load of stone. So I'm just going to head down into our mine. We're going to be mining this out anyway, so I'm just going to dig all this down to probably down to deep slate. What the hell? Why is it? Okay, buddy. Why is there so many silverfish? So I'm going to dig this down until we reach the deep slate, and then I'll probably just keep extending the sides, and, uh, yeah. All right, and now with all of that excavating done, we have this much stone. Uh, it's probably not going to be enough. I'm probably going to have to do more eventually, but, uh, it's enough for now. All right, so now that the rain is finally gone, we can start excavating the area that we need to place our castle. And I'm thinking this spot right over here. It's going to be a nice view when we exit our door, and it's also just a, a decent spot. And so I'm probably going to want it on maybe this layer here, so I'm going to have to excavate a whole lot of dirt and stone here. So, uh, oh, what the hell is a rainbow? 
<laughs> I don't even know that was a thing in this. What the hell? That's actually so cool. I mean, it looks a little bit weird. It kind of moves like you can see the, <laughs> the end of it, but I mean, that's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, like I was saying, it's time to start excavating. All right, now with a pretty large area filled out and excavated, I'm of course gonna have to keep going back further, but uh, now I just wanna quickly like kinda lay out the edges of the castle just to make sure like this is maybe enough or not enough. So let's first start off with the leftmost tower and I'm gonna chuck it in right here, I guess. All right, so that's the layout of one of the towers there and now I'm going to just branch the wall off as far as I need to go and then create the other tower on the other side and uh, yeah, we'll just see how much area we actually need. All right, so from our front door here, that's gonna be the layout of the castle. So we've got the tower tower here and then another tower over here and then the main wall here as well. Okay, gamers, now with all the excavating and the outline done for the castle, it's time to start the actual building process. And so let's actually just start off with this front left tower right here. All right, so there's the outline kind of thing of the uh, actual tower done. And now I'm going to fill in all of the inside like wall sections here with a whole bunch of stripped spruce logs. There's going to be an absolute pain in the ass because uh, I have not pre-stripped these. So yeah. Okay, now with all the stripped logs added in, it's time to add in some extra details because I mean, right now, I just kind of looks like a big stump, I guess. So firstly, along the bottom, we're going to be adding in a nice window. This is, of course, going to be on every single side. I'm just going to show one side because, I mean, it's going to be the exact same thing every time. We're going to add a nice little curved design here by using some trap doors and also some spruce stairs. Then as we get a little bit further up, we're going to place in a nice leaf design up here. We're also going to put some trap doors below those and then also cover the front of all of the leaves using some signs just to make it look a little bit more contained. Then above this, we're going to add in a another window just like that and then all the way up at the top as well we're going to add in the similar same like arch design that we did on the bottom now as we get to the actual top portion of the tower we're going to be adding in some nice designs up here so firstly we're going to place in some stairs like so then we're going to put some spruce fence gates in between those then over in the corners let's place in a slab and i'm gonna have to get some more bloody scaffolding give me a second now as we come up here on top of these upside down stone brick stairs we're going to be placing some more stone bricks and then some more stone brick slabs on top of them and then in between all of these on top of the spruce fence gates we're going to be placing some stone stairs then on these corner ones we're going to place some more stone bricks and then we're pretty much just repeating this exact same thing around the entire kind of like area of the top of the tower and yeah so that's pretty much how the tower is going to look it's going to be this exact same thing on every single side and then we're going to repeat this entire thing again in every single corner and yeah i'm just going to do that as a time lapse because uh it is pretty boring and it's going to take me forever all right so first of all i finished off this front left tower And then it was on to doing the exact same thing in the back left, back right, and front right corners as well. And then for the walls, these are pretty simple. It's just like this nice kind of like pillar design. I don't really know how to explain it, but yeah, it definitely looks cool. Okay, and now with all of the exterior done, oh, well, most of it, it's time to head on to the inside and start adding in the actual mob farm layout. And so as you can see, I've already added a roof on and I've already also excavated the first layer of the floor here. So starting off, we're gonna be digging a three wide channel in the center of the actual area here, and it's gonna be two blocks deep. And so we're gonna continue this all the way down to the end. Now with our channel excavated, we're gonna do the exact same thing, except going across this way. So I'm gonna have to find the middle, which I'm pretty sure is this one right here. Yes, don't judge me, I filled in some of it with slabs. Uh, I'm running really low on stone. All right, now with our channels done, it's time to add in the actual like design thing that uh, I guess sends the mobs down. So let's first excavate one layer right in the center here. And then we're also going to excavate these blocks around the sides. Now these blocks are going to be replaced with some glass blocks. Apparently this helps with uh, the mobs like resisting the current of the water. So yeah. Uh, and I actually just realized that I did this on the wrong goddamn layer. I forgot the water doesn't flow all the way down. This actually has to dip down again. So I'm going to have to go get more 
more glass, which is a pain in my ass. All right, now we're back with some more glass this time. So now we're actually gonna have to excavate one layer down and then we can chuck our glass onto these blocks here. Now, because our water doesn't reach all the way down to the end here, we're gonna have to remove some of these blocks. I'm gonna do that after. So I'm just gonna go ahead and place in all of our water in every single channel. Now on here, we're gonna have to chuck a whole bunch of signs and then we're gonna have to put some more signs above these signs. And this is just to block the flow of the water. And we're gonna have to do the same thing on this side, of course. And of course, I am one sign short. Oh my god, dude. Okay, now that's all of our signs on. So now when we uh, release the water, it'll stop here and then the mobs will just continue pushing off and down into this hole. Speaking of the hole, we need to dig this down a whole bunch of blocks. And so I'm gonna quickly do that right now. All right, so here's our hole and here is like the area that I've made for it. We've also added these trapdoors here so that the mobs can't see us while we're like smacking them. I may have made this room lopsided without knowing, but uh, it doesn't matter. So now what we're gonna quickly add in is the loot collection uh, system. So firstly, directly under the center Center little section here we're gonna place in a hopper and then we're gonna place in a bunch more hoppers that basically just feed into that central one now we're gonna add in our chests that uh, like the hoppers feed down into so let's first add in our first chest here then our second one third one and, uh, and we can just keep going down as far as we want, as long as we just add in this exact design like so. And yeah, there we go. So that's pretty much the area down here completed. Now I need to uh, figure out how to get back up. All right, so now I've set up a nice little tunnel thing. So this goes down and then links back up to our little underground section. So we can go to and fro nice and easily. Now it's time to release all of the canals of water down to where the signs are. And as you can see, they'll stop at the signs, which is exactly what we want. Now we're going to have a whole bunch of just random blocks down in our hoppers, which is definitely a little bit annoying but oh well okay and there we go so that's the actual canals finished now what we have to do to actually coax the mobs that will spawn here to walk down into the canals is to place some open trap doors so they actually think that these trap doors are solid blocks that they can walk on but then they'll quickly realize that they have found themselves inside of the water so yeah we pretty much just need to line all of the sides here with some trap doors so that they fall off into the water down below Okay, and there we go. So just that setup there will work perfectly. But in order to make it a little bit quicker and more efficient, we're going to add another two layers of this exact same thing. So we're going to fill out this entire floor here of slabs, except for like these canal sections, and then just add the trapdoors on all of the edges. And also another thing that we're going to be doing, which uh, might look a little bit weird, is that we're going to be adding these trapdoors everywhere in this kind of pattern. And what this does is it actually stops spiders from spawning, which will actually clog up the design quite a bit. So yeah, we're going to need an absolute crap load of trap doors. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do all of that right now. It's gonna take a while and uh, yeah, here we go. So firstly, I added that weird trap door design to the very first layer. Then I filled in all of the second layer with our slabs. Then I added that exact same trap door thing on the sides and then on the top of that. And then I just repeated this exact same thing once again for a final third layer. All right, and there we go. We're now fully done with the entire mob farm. I mean, it's kind of hard to showcase it, but you probably saw it pretty well in the time lapse. So yeah, like I explained before the time lapse, we just have three separate layers. We've added all of these weird trap doors to stop the spiders spawning. And yeah, now you might notice that there's no mob spawning at the moment. And in order to fix that, we have to go exactly 120 blocks up in the sky and that'll allow the mobs to spawn here. So I've got a whole bunch of scaffolding on me and I have one piece of white wool as well. This is going to be a little platform and I've chosen white wool because it kind of looks like a cloud. But yeah, so from this block here, we're going to have to go 120 blocks up. And uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Alright, so here's our giant ladder of scaffolding that we need to climb. I need to go all the way up there and place a piece of white wool on top. This is, of course, very dangerous. I mean, the series could end right here. But let's be real, I'm going to play this as safe as possible. I'm literally just going to hold space until we get all the way up to the top. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys up there. All right, so here we are at the top. This is a very nice view. I mean, it would be a lot nicer if my render distance wasn't freaking like eight or whatever. But now I'm going to dig down one block, place our piece of white wall right here, and I'm gonna AFK up here for exactly 10 minutes, and then we'll head back down and see how well our mob farm is doing. All right, it's been exactly 10 minutes. So now let's head down the hole and see exactly how many mobs that we have got. All right, it looks like we're pretty full in here. There's definitely gonna be a lot still up there as well that need to actually fall down. So I'll probably wait here for 
for a bit for more to fall down. But uh, let's just start slaying. I'm going to leave all the XP sitting in here, and then I'm going to switch to my shovel to collect it all and see how much more we actually get. So we're at 355 durability right now. Alright, so with all of those mobs slain, we've gone from 355 to 707. That is actually crazy. That is so good. That's like a whole diamond, adding a whole diamond into your thing to heal it, you know? What I'm trying to say. <laughs> Let's see how many drops we've gotten. So excluding all of this crap. So we've gotten 13 bones, 13 arrows. Holy crap, that's actually pretty good just for the amount of mobs that are there. And so that, yeah, like I said, there's obviously going to still be more up on the platform that need to fall down. So I'm going to wait here for a little bit longer and just see how many more mobs we get. Okay, and so to finish off the mob farm, I've just added a few little finishing touches. I fixed up the little area over here. Actually, I still need to fix up over here. Give me a second. Okay, there we go. Like I was saying, I fixed up the dirt area down here so it isn't just like a rectangle thing, you know? I also added a whole bunch of stone slabs in between our little slats around the place. It just looks a little bit better in my opinion. And then I also added this door over here on the outside so that we can quickly go up to the roof and up to our like AFK platform thing. I've also added a chest here with the exact amount of scaffolding and white wall thing that we need to uh, just go up and AFK nice and easily. And yeah, so that pretty much does it for the mob farm. This took definitely a whole lot longer than I thought it would. I started at lunchtime today and now it is 1.09am and uh, yeah. Yeah, did not expect it to take that long, but it was definitely worth it. For the past five episodes, our town has looked like this. Yeah, it's not great. Until today. That's right. I'm going to be upgrading almost every aspect of our town, so let's get started. All right, first things first, I'm going to go slaughter these innocent cows while their children watch because your boy's a little bit hungry. All right, now the first thing I want to do for our area is smoothen off a whole bunch of the landscape everywhere. As you can see, it's a little bit like kind of jagged and spiky everywhere and there's like big holes and stuff. So I'm just going to fill in all these holes and smoothen off everything and make it a bit more livable, I guess. <laughs> Now, with the landscape being a little bit more workable, I guess, it's time to lay out the pathway. Yes, that's right, we're finally adding a goddamn pathway to this village. So you might have noticed during the time lapse, I created this little section here, and this is going to be kind of like the main area of the pathway, I guess. I'm also going to make all of our pathways three blocks wide. I just feel like that's like a, I don't know, a good number. So I'm going to extend this all the way down to our front gate. Oh, hey guys, how's it going? Uh... Okay, I'm gonna have to make this a bit lower. And that leads us over to our gate here. So we've got this path that goes all the way down this way. And then I'm probably going to link this up to our bridge that we'll be creating in this episode over here. I'm finally gonna get rid of this little grass bridge I've been using. And then I'll also have one block wide pathways that'll kind of snake up and around to the houses. And yeah, also our pathways are gonna be made out of gravel and site and stone. I just feel like that's a really nice texture for pathways. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and fill all this in and then link this up over to our bridge and uh, yeah, like I said, connect the houses up as well. Here's a closer look at what just happened. Yeah, that creeper almost just ended the series right then and there. Oh, how good does that look with those pathways? That looks so much better than it did before. So the next thing I want to get done is our little bridge here that leads over to our library and our fully automatic farm over there. Now, I also noticed that our villager in this half of the farm is completely missing. I have no idea what happened to him, so we're going to have to get a new one in here eventually. But yeah, just before we get started on this bridge, I'm going to mine an absolute crap load of stone because I'm sick of running out of it. This is literally Literally all I have in terms of stone to my name and I'm just sick and tired of running out of it so I'm going to just I don't know make a quarry or something I'm just gonna go crazy and then for the bridge we're also gonna need a bunch of wood so I'm gonna harvest a whole bunch of trees as well and then we'll get started on the bridge design Okay, now, with a whole bunch of resources, as you can see, my inventory is uh, pretty loaded. It's time to head over to the bridge. Oh, oh my god, okay, we got a bogey. Hold on, hold on a second, guys. Okay, that was pretty easy. What the hell? And, uh, of course, we have another creeper. I'm gonna have to deal with him as well. Give me a second. 
So the bridge is going to be going right here and I already have a pretty decent idea of what kind of bridge I want to build. So let's get started. Firstly, I'm going to replace all of this grass here and change it to our like actual pathway blocks, except for gravel because I mean, the gravel is just going to fall down. So we're just going to do andesite and stone for this. Uh, no one will probably notice, so it should be all right. All right, so there's the actual pathway for the bridge, the most important part. Now what we have to do is figure out where we want all of our pillars to be. I'm actually going to make the pillars on the kind of outer layer and these are all going to be spaced apart by three blocks, My uh, pretty much my special at this point. I mean, it's just a really easy, like, uh, way to build stuff. And I forgot my scaffolding. Okay, this is uh, gonna be a little bit more annoying than I thought it would be to build. Now I'm gonna be adding some upside down stone stairs in between all of these for the sort of, like, railing base, I guess. We're gonna be adding some more stuff on top of this, so just give me a second. Now, with that done, we're gonna be adding some stone brick walls on top of all of these pillar parts. And, uh, actually, I'm not gonna be adding it to the middle ones. Just, uh, forget about those. Okay, you didn't see what happened here. Because on this part here, we're going to be adding in a nice little roofed section. It's going to look pretty cool, pretty clean. We'll just leave it like that for now. And so in between these, we're going to be adding in these spruce fence gates. It looks kind of weird how the arch doesn't like go back down on this side. So, I mean, it looks all right, actually. It kind of leads up over to this side and then it'll lead back down like that. So yeah, it actually looks pretty cool, actually. So there, now you can see from the side the kind of like uh, style of the bridge, I guess. There's still a little bit more detailing to do. I'm going to have to go and grab some scaffolding because this is going to suck without it, to be honest. Oh, do you guys see that one? You could never dream of doing something that f***ing cool, mate. Sorry, I don't know what's come over me in this past couple of like, minutes. I had some really good dinner and I'm feeling good, okay? All right, so let's build our little scaffolding uh, platform. And of course, I have fallen and I can't get up. All right, so I'm thinking I might actually differ from my plan a little bit. I was gonna I was gonna do one like big arch, but I think I might actually do uh, something different. And uh, first I'm gonna have to clear out a little bit of this stuff so that we can kind of actually see this pillar all the way in here. So give me a second. Okay, there we go, that's a little bit better. Now let's actually add in our pillars on the sides over here. And then I'm gonna add in our central pillars as well. These are gonna go all the way down to the bottom and I'm gonna quickly do the same thing on the other side as well while we're at it. I mean, we could honestly just leave it like that at this point. It looks pretty good, but I'm gonna take it up a another notch and just add in some extra detail. So what I'm thinking, I don't actually know if this is going to look good or not. I mean, I haven't really planned this at all. I'm going to add in like a row of logs behind here. And then I think I'm going to strip all of these logs. And then what I'm going to do next is actually go to bed because um, it's nighttime and I don't want to die. Now underneath this, I gotta try and figure out like what's gonna look good. Uh, so let's just try some slabs first. Now I just gotta stand back to kind of like appreciate the view and like see how it looks. And I think that actually looks pretty cool. It's a little bit thick, but I mean, uh, what are you gonna do about it to be honest? Now what I think I'll do, maybe add some slabs like that for a little bit of uh, interesting lookingness. What if we even added some stairs like this? Is that, I feel like this is gonna look weird as well. Let's just see how it looks. Yeah, just, um, just honestly just forget I even did that. That, yeah. Nah. And let's actually just add on these extra little details that I want to add on before we continue. So, firstly, we're going to be placing some trap doors on these little intersection points. And then beside all of these, we're going to chuck in some signs. And this is just like a really nice detail that adds like a little bit of like depth to um, the side of our bridge here. Oh, something else we can actually do that I just thought of is chuck some lanterns in these little sections to brighten up the area. Hell yeah, that looks awesome. All right, now it's time to repeat this exact same thing on the other side. So let's get to it. Other side complete. All right, now it's on to our actual little roofed section over here, and this is going to look pretty sweet. So let's actually quickly strip all these logs so it matches the logs below. Then we're going to connect them all up along the top to make a bit of a frame here. And then we're just going to slap a roof on this bad boy. And uh, of course, I don't have stone slabs. The one thing I need. Luckily, I brought a crafting table because I know I would forget something that I need. <laughs> And I definitely made the roof too high up. I'm going to have to shift the whole boy down one block. Give me a minute, guys. Now to make this roof section look a little bit more interesting, we're going to add probably one of my most favorite details to add to anything, which is just like this nice arch thing using some trap doors and some upside down stairs in the corners. And now the finishing touches for the bridge. We're going to chuck some lanterns on top of these stone brick walls on the front and back side. And I actually may have lied to you just then. We're actually going to be adding a couple more little finishing touches. We're going to chuck in some barrels and some chests just for some extra neat o decoration. I actually just said neato. What the hell am I on about, dude? And there we go. That's a nice looking bridge in my books. Okay, now this next segment I'm going to be calling uh, Building in the Rain because uh, I can't be bothered waiting for it to go away. So I hope you guys like some aesthetic rain building. So now we have this massive open space right here to add pretty much anything in. And I just thought of something just then to add in here. And that's going to be like a nice little pond slash park thing. So uh, let's just get started in that right now. Alright, so as for positioning, I'm thinking probably like this area 
area like here. I mean, it's not going to take up the whole area, let's be real here. But uh, yeah, so for the pathway, I'm actually just going to branch off a nice little dirt path down to the section. And yeah, I'm thinking this is a nice spot here to start. So we're going to branch the pathway around in a nice kind of circular shape. And yeah, I'm actually pretty happy with that layout. So now let's actually fill in all of these spots where I want the coarse dirt to be. That's not coarse dirt. Okay, hold on. There we go. God damn, when the shovel too powerful. Okay, it's actually annoying at this point. All right, there we go. So there's our path outline done. Now it's time to actually add in the little pond section. Yeah, let's just dig like a nice little circular shape for the pond. Nothing too like perfect looking. Yeah, that's pretty nice. And uh, I think I'm actually gonna quickly grab something to make the pond look a little bit better as well. Also, the building in the rain segment is coming to a close. We're now building in the sun, thankfully. Uh, yeah, also, if you're wondering what this giant thing is, be sure to check out the previous episode. Uh, yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. So yeah, we're gonna be chucking some andesite slabs and stairs in this bad boy, probably just like, I mean, that much, I guess. <laughs> and now let's fill this bad boy up with some water. That's not water. There we go. There's our little pond uh, outline and water done. Next, let's decorate it by adding in some seagrass. Let's chuck in a couple of sugar canes. I also want to put some azaleas in here as well, because that will definitely look nice. And some moss carpet too. Oh yeah, that's nice and lush. Okay, now as we come to the back section over here, I want to add in a nice little bench. So let's chuck in some stairs like this, and then I'll probably add some signs on the sides. And then right here, let's also add in a nice custom tree design. So let's chuck in some oak logs. I don't want this to be too big. So we're just going to do something like this. Yeah, that's looking nice. Something cool we can do as well is chuck a lantern on this little branch here. All right, now for the final detail, I'm going to add some little broken fences around the place that just kind of like frame the area a little bit better. Then let's add some lanterns on top of these fences around the place just to brighten the area up at nighttime. And now the final thing we're going to be adding is some farms beside these. These are just going to be pretty much purely aesthetic. I'm not going to be like harvesting them anytime soon or anything like that. First time using the new bridge. Hell yeah. Your boy's here for some carrots. Man has been hard at work over here. Holy crap. And okay, buddy. And it's still going. The hopper's full. That hopper's full. The barrel's full. I could probably send this guy on a vacation pretty soon, honestly. And now it's time to add in the farms. Now, I just realized you can't harvest tall grass for some reason with shears. It just gives you two pieces of grass. That's like the saddest thing I've ever realized. I just wanted to add this quick clip in. Uh, after the fact, uh, I just realized you can bone mill grass to make it tall grass. Um, yeah. I'm an idiot. So what I'm going to try and do is use some bone meal, like so, to get some tall grass in the spots that I actually want it in. And uh, yeah, that's honestly pretty good. I actually really like having that dense grass behind there. That looks nice as. I'm going to leave it like that. Now let's sprinkle in a couple more flowers around the place just to add a little bit of vibrance to the area. Uh, we've got a bogey coming after us, of course. Man, I'm trying to do lush, peaceful things. Get the hell out of here. Uh, and now, I don't know about you guys, but this tree actually looks really crap. I was lying when I said I liked it, okay? We're, we're gonna have to do something better. Now, let's actually make the custom tree that I had planned to make. So, a really nice and easy way to make a, like nice and easy custom tree is to just make a main stem obviously of the tree and then to just place a whole bunch of branches randomly around the place like this and now with like a dead tree looking thing right here what we're going to do next is add in a leaf block and we're pretty much aiming to cover every exposed face of the wood here and there we go just like that we have created a really nice custom tree and i still also made sure to leave a nice br oh okay uh whoopsie daisy <laughs> and yeah, like I was saying, I still made sure to leave a nice branch here that we can hang a lantern on. I would actually like to do the same right here as well. So uh, there we go. Now I had another nice extra little idea for a uh, thing to add here. And that is just like a nice little bamboo farm thing. And then because I don't want these to freaking skyrocket in the air like these ones over here, I'm going to cap them off by using some string on top. This is a really handy way to just stop anything from growing. Saplings as well, works on saplings. And sugar canes too, like if I wanted to keep this one two blocks high, you can just chuck a piece of string on top and it's virtually invisible as well. And yeah, so there's our nice little park thing that we've added in, or park slash pond. It's going to look a whole lot better when all of the crops are actually grown, so we'll check back in on it pretty soon and see how it looks. And so while we wait for that, I'm going to go ahead and get started with a really big time lapse that it's going to take quite a while. So I'm just going to go ahead and add in a whole bunch of new houses around the place. And I'm also going to try and get as much of the wall done as I can. Now the areas where I think I'm going to be expanding the walls, I'm probably just going to use spruce fences instead just to save me the trouble of destroying it and expanding it. And uh, yeah, so let's just go ahead and get started in that right now. All right, so firstly, I just wanted to go around and add some texture to all of our existing houses and buildings. So instead of just having plain stone bricks, I wanted to sprinkle in some stone as well. I feel like it just makes it look a little bit more interesting.
Then it was on to adding in a couple of new house designs. We added in a couple of single story ones like this one here and also a couple of two story buildings as well. Then it was on to adding in a bunch of walls. I didn't want to add in too many because I'm going to be expanding pretty far anyway and I don't want to just have to destroy all of this in the future, so yeah. And now the final thing, I just wanted to add in this nice lamp design in a whole bunch of different places around the pathway just to brighten up everything. The time has finally come to move out of our starter base. That's right, I've been living inside of a mine entrance for the past six episodes. But today, that's going to change. Let's get started. Okay, gamers. So this new base that I want to create is going to be nothing short of massive. And so we need to find a suitable location to place our base. Well, not place it, but build it, you know? So I've been scouting out a few areas. We've got a nice area over here that needs a little bit of landscaping. And then there's also this spot up here, which needs a f load of landscaping, which I can not honestly be bothered doing at all. So I think this spot over here is going to be the best option. As you can see, nice and flat over here. We need to do a little bit of landscaping to connect this land up over here and around that way. So uh, yeah, I'm going to get started doing that right now. Alright, now with a massive area here to work with, it's time to go ahead and harvest a whole bunch of spruce logs. We're going to need an absolute load for this house. We're also going to need a bunch of stone, so I'm going to go ahead and get all of that real quick right now. Alright, so I'm just down here mining for some iron, and I just stumbled across a nice little dungeon. I just felt like I had to update you guys on this. It's a pretty big discovery for the series, as we can make this into a much easier to use spawner than the one that I made, because we don't have to go like 100,000 blocks into the sky, you know? So yeah, I'm gonna mark down the coordinates for this bad boy and save it for later. Maybe a bit of a future project, you know? Uh, wink, wink. <laughs> up, idiot. You... Dude, why would you do that? You're actually brain dead honestly. Okay, now with a whole bunch of resources, it's time to lay out the foundations of the base and find the best spot that we can for the uh, base. Now, this would be a lot easier if we had creative mode. We could just fly and find the best spot. So instead, what I'm going to do is just make a big scaffolding pillar and just try and use this to find the best spot. Now, well, of course it has started raining, but there is the outline of our base. And uh, I think I actually want to move it to the right, maybe like two or three blocks. So uh, yeah, give me a second. Okay, there we go. That is looking absolutely perfect now. So now with the placement perfect, it's time to create all of the outlines and all of the frames. So let's get started. All right, and there's the frame all done of the house. Though so you might be able to see this taking shape now. So we've got this big rectangular building at the back. And then we've got this smaller one that kind of joins up to it. And then we also have this outer fence here as well. And so now with all of the outline and framing done, it's time to add in all of the walls and windows and stuff like that. So let's get started doing that right now. All right, and there we go. Now we're done with all of the walls and the extra little detail. I don't really know what to call these. Uh, lantern hanger doobies. Now all that's left to do is the roof, of course, and also this like exterior wall thing. All right, now with all of the exterior done, well, except for like this interior exterior area, it's time to head on to the interior interior. And I'm just going to quickly knock out all of the boring stuff, which is the floor and the first floor ceiling here. So yeah. Okay. And there we go. So there's the complete floor design. I really like the way this looks. It's nice and cozy looking. And now it's time to add in the ceiling. Okay. And there we go. So there's the ceiling and the floor done. I'm really happy with the way it looks in here. Okay. Now I've just gone ahead and grabbed pretty much all 
all of my crafting blocks and a whole bunch of furnaces and chests as well from my database over there. And now I'm just going to lay out a whole bunch of the interior. So first of all, I'm thinking of adding just a whole bunch of double chests to pretty much just line this back wall here. Now I am three chests short, unfortunately, but yeah, I'm actually really happy with the way that looks. That's pretty cool. Now over here in this section, I'm going to add in our crafting area. So I'm just going to grab all of our crafting blocks real quick. And I uh, actually just realized I have a stone cutter that I still need to place in. So I think I'll actually just replace one of these crafting tables with the stone cutter like so. Then I want to actually make a couple of pots and just add in a bunch of decorations around the place with some pot plants. And then I do have a couple of other ideas for some extra decorations I wanted to add on here like a amethyst cluster, but I don't exactly know how to get that. So uh, maybe just let me know in the comments, you know? Now for the next section to the left over here, this is going to be our primary like smelting area. So I'm pretty much going to do almost the exact same thing that we just did because I want it to look kind of uniform. Okay, so remember what I was just talking about, how I wanted to keep things nice and uniform? Uh, just honestly, just forget that I said that because we're going to have to change this design up quite a bit if we want it to uh, be able to hold a bunch of furnaces. So I'm thinking of maybe doing something like this, like a vertical kind of design, I guess. And then maybe let's chuck in like barrels like so. I'm just going to quickly craft another one because it's going to annoy me if I don't. Okay, there we go. And let's chuck that in. Now let's maybe add in some stairs under here and then maybe some more stairs up here as well. Okay, that's not the right way. And yeah, that looks pretty cool. I mean, there's not really any room to add in like decorations. Oh, okay. I didn't think that would destroy in one hit. But yeah, there's not really many room to add any decorations or anything, but this is nice and functional, which is what I prefer at the moment. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to quickly chuck in some uh, lanterns around the place because it's pretty dark in here. And uh, yeah, for the first floor like area over here, I'm actually really happy with the way that looks. I'm going to quickly make some more chests because that's going to annoy me if I don't do that. We've also got some room here to add in maybe like a couple of extra decorations, like a table or something like that. And we can chuck some interesting stuff on top of that, maybe like some armor stands and stuff. You little s you f That's not gonna work, is it? Holy- Did you just see how many hearts I had Dude, I just got goosebumps across my entire f body. I literally had half a heart left. Dude, why do creepers have to exist, honestly? This sh is pissing me off. <laughs> like, I'm actually angry right now. The series literally almost ended right there because of that little sh lord. Okay, my my heart rate is definitely like, uh, oh, mate, okay. I'm gonna take this bed, we're gonna go inside and sleep right now because, um, yeah, that was not very good. Okay, now let's, uh, fix up the, uh, situation that we've got going on over here because of that little turd monkey. Okay, there we go, that's all fixed up. I should probably light up the area around us, uh, a lot more than I have. Okay, so yeah, like I was uh, gonna do, I was gonna chuck an armor stand on here, and we can eventually put this armor on there. Hopefully we're gonna get some diamond armor pretty soon. That would be pretty good. And then just for another nice decoration, we'll chuck an azalea in there as well. All right, so that's the three main areas done. Smelting, crafting, storage. Next, I'm thinking we head upstairs up here and add in the bedroom, which I'll probably put down at the end, I think. I mean, it's a little bit annoying to have to go all the way up here to sleep, but I feel like if we add it in like closer to the ladder, it might look weird. So yeah, I think that's honestly the best spot there. And now I'm just going to quickly craft some stuff to uh, decorate the area. All right. So now up here, let's add in our signature barrels all along the top. And then we're going to chuck in this little shelf design as well. And we might as well place in a lantern right here too. That looks pretty nice. Then let's add in some little bedside tables here as well. Of course, I'm one goddamn log short. Give me a second. All right, so it turns out I'm actually completely out of logs, so I'm just gonna leave it like this for now. I'll, I'll fix it up later once I go back over for another trip. But yeah, so on here, I just wanna chuck in a couple of little decorations. Maybe on this side, we can chuck in an Azua Bluet, and then on this side, an Azalea, and that looks pretty nice. We can also cover in this little gap here with some more slabs. And yeah, that's a pretty nice looking bedroom. I'll probably slap some carpets around this as well to make it look a little more cozy. Oh, it's honestly making me like pretty upset that we're like tearing all this stuff down out here. I mean, this is going to be the last episode where the intro is going to be shot here. It's the last time we're going to be coming in here to like grab our stuff and, you know, just do the daily routine. But, uh, you know, we're moving up in the world. We actually have a house to live in now. This is going to become the new mine entrance of the town. Yeah, things things are looking good, okay? I also just realized that we have not completed the exterior at all. I wanted to add these nice big sprawling farms. So I'm probably just going to go ahead and do that right now as a time lapse because, uh, yeah, it's probably going to take a while and and uh, it should look pretty good as well.
right, and there we go. So there's our big sprawling farm that I want. What the hell? Why is that like, nah, brother. Uh, yeah, like I was saying, there's our big sprawling farm that I wanted to add around the exterior of our base. It just makes it look nice and lush and like cool looking, I guess. Next, let's quickly add in the pathway for the exterior out here. So I think I want these two to connect up like so, and then this will probably branch off into like a three wide path because that's how wide the path is in the rest of our village. So yeah, and there we go. So now I'm just going to quickly like extend this down to here. I don't actually have enough uh, to link all the way over to our bridge. So I'm gonna do that probably just uh, off camera, uh, you know? You know how it is. But uh, yeah, so you get the general idea. Our path is gonna go down here. It's gonna link up to the library and then just kind of go all the way over there to the bridge. It's just boring stuff. So uh, yeah, I'll do it another time, you know? But now for in here, I actually wanted to add in just a whole bunch of flowers and gr- Are you okay, dude? What are you doing? F off, man, get out of here. Oh, wait, what? I just gave it a I just gave it my flower. I didn't realize I could do that. Do you want another one? No? Okay. <laughs> I didn't realize you could give bees flowers. That's probably what it wanted. That's why it's chasing me. But uh, yeah, I don't actually really have that many flowers. So I'm probably gonna have to go and find some real quick. Now, I actually thought an easier way to do this would just be to like bone meal a whole bunch of shit in here just to get all the grass that I'd want to add in. And that already looks pretty good. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and sprinkle in a bunch of flowers. All right, and yeah, that's honestly looking pretty nice. I'm happy with the way this looks. It's got like a nice little garden to walk into, you know? Gamers, today is a monumental day because we're finally going to finish the town. That's right, we're gonna add in all of the walls, more houses, and finally release the villages. So, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna get created in our village is an animal barn. Previously, I was holding the animals inside of my starter base and I don't really feel like doing that in my new base. So I think it's a good idea to create a fully dedicated animal barn. And as you can see, I've already cleared out a spot here. Uh, I mean, I already recorded this whole intro and of course the audio was wigging out. So now I'm just gonna start building and uh, yeah, see what I can come up with pretty much. So I've already got a general layout in mind and that layout is pretty much having a corridor down the center and then we have our animal like kind of sections on the sides. So this is going to, I uh, might have to do a little bit more landscaping actually. Yeah, I'm gonna have to actually clear out a little bit more stuff. So uh, just bear with me here. There we go. That's a little bit better. I might actually have to push this entire thing back a little bit further as well. But uh, yeah, I'm just gonna keep laying out the pillars here. Okay, it looks like this might actually stay as a square uh it's gonna be pretty big if i keep going so yeah i'm just going to leave it like this for now and uh yeah now it's time to raise up all of the pillars all right so there's the frame done now i'm wanting to keep this pretty open so i think for the walls i want to go with something like this maybe even actually change this to be a spruce fence gate in the center just to break up the repetitiveness a little bit or actually maybe even just invert this entirely have a fence in the center and fence gates on the sides yeah that looks a lot better we'll also be able to chuck a lantern on top of that too but something i'm worried about is the above section here is going to be maybe too repetitive having the same design up here and uh yeah i feel like that is going to be just just too many fences, like kind of for the walls, you know? So we may have to come up with a different design for the wall here. And I actually just had an idea. Um, I'm gonna have to go grab something, so give me a second. All right, so for my other wall design, I'm instead thinking of putting some leaves across like so, and then having some signs in front of these. And yeah, I'm actually pretty happy with the way that looks. It's nice and floral and uh, yeah. Now I'm just gonna quickly repeat this exact same thing across all of the walls, except for like the actual entrance here, which I'm probably just going to chuck a couple of fence gates like so. All right, and there we go. That's all of the walls done. I even left a nice little secret over here. And uh, yeah, now with the wall designs figured out and uh, created, it's now time to add in the roofs, which is gonna be pretty simple. I'm just gonna do like a slab roof on the sides here and then I'll just repeat the exact same roof that we've done for pretty much this house over here as well. And I'll, yeah, chuck that in up there. All right, and there we go. So that's pretty much it for the exterior. I'm gonna have to get this done pretty quick because I'm down to my last piece of food. I need to get the animals in here real quick. But yeah, I really love the like kind of open look for a barn. So I'm just gonna leave these pretty much just completely open. Now heading on to the interior, I wanna add some cross beams all the way across here. And of course I am a couple of logs short. I'm pretty sure that is... Okay, now I want to add in some extra pillars to support these two big pillars that we've just added in. And then on the sides here, this is also going to allow us to keep the animals separate. So I think on the left side here, I actually just want to have a full section probably for cows. So I'm going to do something like this and have a fence gate in every section. And then on this side over here, I think I'm going to have three separated sections, probably for sheep, maybe chickens and like, I don't know, some other animals that we'll find eventually. But yeah, it's just nice having the ability to like separate those animals. So yeah, I definitely like the idea of doing that. And then all the way at the end, 
end here, I'll chuck in maybe just a couple of barrels like so for some storage for any uh, like animal products, probably like wheat and stuff like that. All right, and there we go. Now after adding in a pathway, a couple of lanterns, and we also brought in all of our animal friends. Uh, I don't know how this guy got in here. We're not gonna talk about it. But yeah, so that's pretty much it for the animal barn. The animals finally have their own place to live and I don't have to put up with their annoying noises anymore. Thank God for that. Okay, the next thing that I wanna get started doing is to create a fence that kind of goes around this way, up along here and up connected up to our castle. And this is to keep our villages kind of separated from the area that's gonna be over here. So that means what I'm gonna start doing is just placing in a whole bunch of fences. I'm probably going to connect it up to the edge of the castle over here like so. And then I'll also connect it up over here as well. And uh, yeah, I'll just do that as a time lapse because um, I mean, it's pretty boring, brother. Now with our entire area fenced off, as you can see, it runs all the way along here. I've tried to mob proof it as much as I can and village proof it, I guess, so they can't get out. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling pretty happy with the setup. Oh my God, I just picked up all my garbage. I just dropped on the floor, God. <laughs> And so now it's time for a pretty monumental part of the series, something I've been wanting to do for quite a while now, which is release most of our villagers. I want to keep two down here just to be safe, just in case if, you know, something happens and they all cark it, you know? I'm going to try and like maybe wall in like two or so, just so, um, yeah, we have them as a backup like I just explained. So I guess these two, I'm sorry guys, but you're going to be doomed down here forever. Um, if you guys want to, can you move brother? Yep, get in there. Okay, we've got two locked in. We're good to go. Okay, everyone, get the hell out. Yes, be free gamers. Explore your new village. Get some nice vitamin D or, or whatever the vitamin is from the uh, the sun, you know? Okay, we've already got some blacksmith guys getting getting jobs. Okay, that's cool. Look at them all. Look at them all go. Hell yeah, get out there, guys. Yes, this is awesome. This is exactly what I want in my village. I want a nice, lively village with villagers walking around, you know? It just makes it feel so much better creating all of this stuff and you got these, like, nice little guys walking around, you know? Honestly, I have no idea what I'm saying right now, but uh, yeah. Hopefully we get a bunch of iron golems spawning around the place as well. That would be really good. It'd be nice for some uh, village defense. And uh, that actually leads into the next thing that I want to create for our village, which is some village defense. Well, theoretically, we're probably never going to use it, but I want to add in some little watchtower designs in some strategic locations. So yeah, let's just get started doing that right now. All right, so for this watchtower design, I'm thinking of something that's not going to be too crazy. Maybe just like a three by three little tower. Chuck the door on. Okay, and now let's just figure out how high up we want to go with this bad boy. So maybe like two or three blocks higher than the top of the walls here just so it like kind of sticks up a little more you know what I'm trying to say okay and then now let's create the actual top area here so we're going to be adding in a ladder of course up to the top and I want this to be opposite the door so all of these blocks here behind the door are going to have to be solid blocks and then we can add on some nice like window designs on the side ones so we got two two high window bits here and we can just add in some fences in those now let's head back up to the top and add in the top design up here so I'm thinking something pretty similar Similar to the existing castle over there. So we're just going to have some upside down stairs on these parts. Then in between them, let's put in our fence gate. And then on top of these stairs, let's put in some solid blocks like so. And then we'll have some stone stairs in between those. And then finally some stone brick slabs on top of those full blocks like so. And uh, now I'm just gonna quickly do this on every side and we'll take a look at how it looks. Uh, in a second. Okay, okay. It looks pretty cool. It could use a bit of texture. It does look kind of plain. And also maybe a little bit of width towards the base here because it looks kind of tall and skinny and top heavy. So I think a good way to fix that is by adding some blocks like so around the sides. And we're going to chuck some stairs on top of those. Uh, we're not really going to be able to do it on this side, unfortunately, because the wall is going to be in the way. I probably should have built this one block further out. But yeah, just adding something like that definitely adds in a lot of like stability lookingness to the build and can help with the fact that it was looking pretty top heavy before. And then let's also sprinkle in a bit of texture, the same texture that we've added to pretty much every building around here, which is just a little bit of stone. And yeah, that's definitely a really good way to add a bit of life to your build if you think it looks pretty plain, like how this did before. Just adding some nice texture, even just one different block can make it look a whole lot better than it did before. And there we go. That's a pretty nice looking watchtower now. So if we take a look from the outside, yeah, that looks cool. I like that. It'd probably look better from like a higher angle. But yeah, that's cool. That's exactly what I was going for. Now, 
I'm probably going to add maybe one or two more of these in some spots. I'm not exactly sure where I want to add them. I might put one over near the bridge, maybe. Yeah, I might chuck one in on this spot right here. I'm just going to do it as a time lapse because, uh, y you know, it's, it's pretty boring. It's the exact same thing we just did. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, hell yeah, those are looking awesome. We got some nice defense systems in our area now. And now the next thing that I wanna go ahead and do is just fill up the rest of the space in our village here. So we've got a big gap over here where I'm probably gonna add in another house, another two-story one like that one. And then I also wanna figure out what I wanna do with this area over here. I'm not entirely sure. I might even just add in like a big crop farm or something like that. But yeah, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get started creating that house right now. Of course, there's a time lapse because uh, you all know it's pretty boring. So yeah, let's get started doing that right now. Now, as for this area that I was talking about before, I decided to make it a sort of slums area. So basically, we're just adding a whole bunch of rundown houses. I thought this was a cool idea. Well, for a build, not the actual idea of like poverty. And yeah, so I think it looks pretty cool having two completely different types of areas so close together. It adds a lot of diversity to the town and yeah. Now, I have something I have to get off my chest. I may have clickbaited you guys with the title of this video. We're not actually completed with the town, okay? We've finished this, like, kind of area of the town. And so we still have this whole area over here to complete as well. I'm not exactly sure what I want to get done over here. I might add in some more, like, automatic farms or stuff like that. I'm not exactly sure. Gamers, I am absolutely pumped for this episode because we're going to be building some awesome stuff, like a massive upgrade to our quarry and some brand new farms. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so the first thing that I want to get started creating in this episode is the upgrade for our stone quarry. Uh, it's a little bit far away, so just give me a second. All right, so here it is. So yeah, basically right now it's just a giant square in the ground and uh, I want to add some nice decorations around the exterior of this and also a staircase down into it as well. So let's just get started. And so the first thing that I'm going to have to do is a little bit of excavating because we're going to be adding in some buildings that are going to kind of take up this area here. I'm going to have to just remove a whole bunch of this mountain. So yeah. All right, so after like landscaping all of this over here, I just decided to put it on this corner anyway as I feel it'll look a little bit better. And so now with all of the landscaping done or most of it hopefully it's time to start laying out all of the pillars and uh yeah this is going to be a pretty lengthy process and it's going to use up a lot of wood so thankfully i do have a whole bunch of wood that i prepared earlier and uh yeah so i'm just going to lay out all of these pillars and uh yeah i'll be back in a sec oh jesus um yeah i'll be back in a second All right, and there we go. So there's the layout for all of the pillars. Now this structure is primarily going to just remain as pillars. We're gonna be adding a whole bunch of accents, like some arches in between all of these and also some roofs and a whole bunch of other things. Actually need to add some more pillars up here for where the actual crane part is going to be attached to. And uh, yeah, that's gonna take a while. So we'll just uh, continue the time-lapse right now. All right, and there we go. That's pretty much all of the quarry done. All that's left to do is add the actual crane part in here. And uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna quickly add that in right now. So firstly, I'm gonna chuck a single fence here and then a couple of chains, and that'll connect up to this section here. And then we have to jump down into the hole to add in the rest. All right, so now I'm gonna chuck on another couple of chains and then a fence and then the rest of the chains here. And then this is gonna connect up to a spruce slab. Well, uh, like a full block, but it's two spruce slabs because I can't be bothered to <laughs> grab a whole block. And then then all the way around this, we're gonna chuck in some camp. Oh my god, okay, settle down there, mate. Yeah, we're gonna. Oh my god, I, okay, I literally just did that. Yeah, so we're gonna place campfires all the way around it, like so. And then to finish off the look, we're gonna chuck on some signs all the way around this as well. And uh, yeah, there we go. There's the crane for our uh, actual quarry build. Now I'm just gonna go around and add in a couple of little details, like some barrels and some chests, and also some extinguished campfires as well around the place, just to liven it up a little bit more. All right, and there we go. 
there's our completed quarry build. All right, so for this next build, I'm wanting to build it around this area over here. And firstly, what I wanna go ahead and do is actually do a little bit of landscaping as I'm wanting to add in a main pathway that kind of goes over this direction. And then it's gonna like branch off over here up to my house eventually. I'm not actually gonna be placing in the pathway because I don't have enough gravel or andesite to do that. So I'm just gonna do some excavating uh, to begin with, you know? All right, there we go. That's pretty decent for now. So our main pathway is going to go over this direction. And then I'm wanting to add in this build probably up here somewhere. It's going to be pretty small, so I don't need too much of an area. And now, uh, yeah, so I think I'm just going to chuck it in in this spot up here. So I'm going to flatten off this land a little bit more and then we can start building it. And yeah, that's a pretty good looking spot now. And uh, I guess I should probably also mention what we're actually building right now. And that is a fully automatic pig farm. So it's a pretty small build. And uh, yeah, this is basically the outline of all the pillars. Actually, I'm probably just going to leave it like that that for now as I think it's going to be easier to build it without the pillars there to begin with. So firstly let's place in a couple of blocks on the sides here. We're going to be placing four up like so. Then at the back here we're going to place a single block and then on top of that a dispenser followed by another block on top of that dispenser and then another dispenser just like that. Now on this block here we're actually going to be placing in an observer like so. So let's chuck on our button and then in this dispenser here we're also going to be placing in a lava bucket and in our top one we're going to place a water bucket. Now on this block here we're going to be placing in an open trap door like so and then all the way at the bottom here we're going to place in a stone slab and then underneath here we're also going to be placing in a hopper and a double chest uh, i don't have either of those because i forgot them uh give me a second all right and there we go there's our hopper and chests now let's go ahead and add in our double chest here and then uh, i'm also going to have to dig down a little extra to place in our hopper like so and let's just fill all of these blocks back in i'm actually going to replace all of these blocks around here with some stone ones just to make it look a little bit cleaner just like that that looks pretty nice. Now, all in front of here, we're going to be placing in some glass blocks like so. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it for the actual pig farm. I might as well go ahead and grab the pigs now. So I've got two cute little piggies in here that are going to be our uh, test subjects. I grabbed them from this forest over here. It took quite a while because uh, they were pretty spread apart. And uh, yeah, so now let's just lead these over here and then we're going to chuck them in top of the thing. Uh, I don't know how that's going to go. So uh, yeah, we'll see. And yeah, also the reason why I chose pigs is because we have a massive surface plus of carrots that are being automatically harvested. So I just figured that would probably be the best animal to use for this. Now let's go ahead and make a staircase up into this bad boy and uh, see how this goes. So our little pigs need to go inside here. I'm just going to try and push them in. There we go. Uh, actually, I think this needs to be up higher so they don't jump out. And let's just see if we can push this guy in as well. That would be pretty nice. Get in there. Yes! Okay, sweet. That is perfect. Now I'm just going to quickly replace all of these dirt blocks with some stone ones just to make it look a little nicer. There we go. All right. Now, so for this to work, what we have to do is um, right click on the pigs. It's a little bit annoying. So what we can do is actually place our button on here, which will toggle our water bucket and that'll let us breed the pigs a little bit easier. And so there we go. Now there's our baby pig. And now if we turn off the water here, we should see our baby pig has dropped down here. And now when this guy grows up, we can press this button to toggle the lava. Uh, it's not working because I need to place a block here. Yeah, so now if we press the button, the lava should toggle on for the perfect amount of time to burn the adult pigs, and then their cooked pork will be sent directly into the chest here. And yeah, so that's basically how it works. It's pretty cool. It's definitely an upgrade from uh, just manually like slaying and breeding the animals, which is pretty nice. And so now what I'm going to go ahead and do is just finish creating the actual exterior like aesthetic portion of this build. All right, so now as for this side of the build here, I'm going to be adding a ladder up that allows me to go inside of the build up here, breed our pigs, press the button to release the babies and then come back down and leave, you know? So let's just add in a nice textured wall on the exterior here, similar to the textured walls that we've added to all of our buildings pretty much. Then let's add in our door like so. And uh, yeah, there we go. There's the side of the build done. Now I'm just gonna fill in all of the rest of the walls with just our same textured pattern. Next, let's go ahead and add on the roof and uh, yeah, <laughs> this is pretty much the same kind of roof as every other build. There is an extra little step to this roof that I'm adding in, which will probably look pretty cool. And uh, I'll just show you that once I've completed like pretty much all of the roof here. So yeah, I just felt like the roof for this was pretty boring. So I decided on adding in this nice little feature here. It's nothing too crazy, but it's definitely just a really nice extra little detail to add to the roof. And yeah, that's pretty much all it is. It's just this little like uh, bit here. <laughs> I don't really know how to explain it, but yeah. And then we're just gonna fill in the rest of the roof like normal. And yeah, so as you can see, this is the back part of the roof. This is how it would look on the front if I didn't add that extra little doobie thing. And then here's what it looks like. Oh, okay. There's a piece of grass in the way. And yeah, here's what it looks like with the extra little thing on. Of course it's going dark time, so I can't really show it easily, but yeah, it just adds like a nice little extra flair to the roof. 
looks pretty cool in my opinion. Now let's finish up all the sides of the buildings by adding in our signature design here with these fence gates and the fence in the center with a lantern on that. And now as for this front section here, I'm just going to add in this simple design to make it look a little bit nicer. So we're just going to add in some upside down and regular spruce stairs like so. And then we're going to add in some spruce trap doors as well. And there we go. So now this is going to link back up to our main pathway uh, when I add that in. And yeah, so there we go. There's our pig farm created. And yeah, so like I was saying before, all I have to do is just come in through this door up the ladder and then all the way up here. Uh, I should probably patch up that little gap. Uh, there we go. And yeah, so I can press this button to elevate the pigs for me and then I can breed them by right clicking them with some carrots. I mean, you probably know how that works by now. They'll make a baby. I'm probably gonna leave this baby up here because I wanna be able to breed more pigs at a time. So I'm probably just gonna leave the water here for now. And then yeah, if I were to turn off the water, the baby pig would fall down and then once it turns to an adult, I can press this button and cook them up for my nice dinner. Now, just for ease of use, I'll probably add in a double chest up here and fill it up with some carrots just so I don't have to go and grab some whenever I want to breed some more of these pigs. And, uh, yeah. So now that's pretty much it for the pig farm. All right. Now the next thing I want to do is add in a bamboo farm over in this area right here. It's not really going to have that much of a use because I do have a lot of scaffolding already, but I just feel like it'll look really nice. And uh, yeah, I just kind of want to build it. It'll be pretty quick and easy. So yeah. And so the first thing I need to do is actually uh, take our horse out of the hole here. I kind of forgot about him again. Uh, I need to get a saddle so I can actually ride this this guy that would be pretty nice uh, that actually sounds kind of wrong just forget what I said. But yeah, so I'm going to take this guy up with a lead and uh, just probably leave him in this area uh, until the end of the series, most likely. But uh, yeah, there you go, buddy. At least he looks nice in our front yard here. Now I can just cover this hole back up that he was in. And yeah, now we can get started on the actual bamboo farm. So I'm probably just going to create an outline with the fence first, just so I can get it looking nice. So I want to do more of like a rounded shape, kind of like our automatic farm here. So let's do the corners kind of like this. Uh, okay, that's actually not how I wanted it forget about that. All right, so I want it to go two and then one and then two and then back out. Yeah, there we go. I don't really know how else to explain it, but yeah, that's just how my brain works, okay? And so I want this to be odd so that I can chuck in a fence gate in the middle here. So just like that. And now we're gonna mirror this on this side. Uh, I hope we have enough room. Okay, thankfully we do. Perfect. Now back onto the side here, we're just going to mirror the exact same thing that we just did for the front. So yeah. All right, and there we go. So there's the fence for our bamboo farm. And now what I'm gonna simply do is just fill up the entire thing with bamboo. I'm gonna leave in a gap in the center here for a pathway, which I might as well just add in right now. And now I'm just gonna fill up this entire area with some bamboo. So uh, yeah, just give me a second. actually ran out towards the end there. So thankfully bamboo grows pretty quickly. Now I would love to chuck some lanterns onto all of this, but I don't have enough iron, which is a bit of a pain. I'm actually really sick of having to mine iron. So I really want to get an iron farm created pretty soon. I just don't exactly know how to do it. And it seems like a bit of a pain in the butt, but uh, yeah. Gamers, I am sick to death of never having any goddamn iron. So today we're going to create an iron farm, but not just any iron farm, the ultimate iron farm. Okay, I'm sick of saying iron farm. Uh, let's get started. Okay, boys and girls. So the first thing I need to do is uh, get a whole bunch of stone. As you can see, I don't really have too much stone in here. And uh, reading my little block list sheet, I'm going to need like 15 stacks of stone, five stacks of stone bricks, and a whole bunch more. And uh, yeah, so I'm just going to head over to my quarry right now and start the excavation process. Okay, and now with a whole bunch of stone excavated and smelted, I do have more smelting inside, of course. It's time to go ahead and find the spot for our iron farm. Wait, what the hell? I actually missed a block here on my house. Whoopsie daisy. And yeah, so I know iron farms need to be at least 64 blocks away from an existing village. So I'm going to head to this flat area that I found behind my house over here. There's actually a really nice spot for the iron farm. And because it's still close to my house, it should mean that it's still going to be running 24-7. But even if it doesn't work, I'm still happy to just come over here and AFK. And yeah, so... As you can see, a pretty nice and flat area. It's going to need a little bit of terraforming. Uh, so yeah, I'm probably going to have to actually go back and grab some grass. Uh, give me a minute. Okay, now with a whole bunch of grass, it's time to start the terraforming process. I'm actually not going to have to do too much as this area is going to actually work pretty well as it is. So yeah, let's get started terraforming. Okay. 
Okay, and there we go. So there's the outline of all of the pillars for the iron farm. As you can see, we have a tower structure on the left, the back, and the right, and also a smaller one in the middle. So this is where the iron golems are going to be uh, executed, to put it lightly. And then the left, back, and right towers are where the golems are going to actually be spawning in. And now, uh, yeah, now I'm just going to get started building this left tower as uh, the other ones are going to be pretty much exactly the same. And I'll just do those as a time lapse. So yeah, let's get started. So firstly, let's build up the walls a little bit here. And uh, I'm just going to leave a gap here for our door. Next, I'm going to excavate a little bit of an area here so that we can add in a nice pathway. And then we're going to chuck in our door and also our signature design of a stone stair block above this. All right, now I'm just going to add one extra layer above here. And then let's just remove this scaffolding real quick. All right, so as for the door design here, I'm going to be chucking in a couple of oak leaves on the front. Then above the door, let's chuck in some extinguished campfires. Uh, we'll actually have to extinguish them. There we go. Then below the left and right side, we're going to chuck in some stone brick walls. And then below this, some spruce fences to connect back up with our leaf design design thing. Now let's uh, crack out the scaffolding once again and head up a little higher. Next, let's add in another layer of stone here. And then on this layer here, we're going to be adding in our windows. So let's start them off by adding in some stone stairs. Uh, let's also extend our scaffolding up once again. Now all of these windows are going to be two blocks high. So let's raise these up like so. And then we're going to chuck in some more stone stairs on the top. And then let's add in some spruce fences for the windows. Then as we get up a little higher, let's once again add in some more stone like so. Then right in the center here, let's chuck in three over leaves. Then we're going to add in a spruce slab on the bottom and at the top in the center. And then we're going to surround the rest of the leaves with some spruce trap doors like so. And that just gives us a nice little design like this. It's uh, pretty much my signature design at this point. I don't really know. Uh, yeah. Honestly, just don't even ask. Now let's add in some more stairs for our next set of windows here. And then uh, just our stone blocks as well. I mean, you guys pretty much get the point. And then all the way at the top here, we're going to, yeah, of course, add in more stairs and then our windows like so. Now, as we are all the way at the top here, it's time to add in the uh, top of like the tower design thingamajing. So on the corners here, we're going to be placing in some stone brick stairs. And then above those, some stone bricks, uh, not in front of it. Then all the way in the middle here, we're going to add in a strip of stone slabs like so. And then on every second one, we're going to chuck in some slabs and uh, just realized I placed this entire thing on the wrong layer. Give me a second. Yeah, so that's pretty much it for the entire like design of the tower. Uh, it's going to be a similar thing on the other sides and also down here. Just a little bit different, but I mean, I won't bore you with all of the details. And so yeah, now I'm just going to go ahead and create all of the aesthetics for this build and then we'll come back in after the time lapse and add in all of the actual mechanism stuff. So yeah, let's get started. Alright, so there's pretty much all of the towers done. I still have to do a little bit of stuff. Uh, also, I just wanted to quickly apologize if I sound a little bit weird. Uh, it's a couple days later and uh, yeah, I got a little bit of cheeky COVID. Uh, it kind of sucks. So yeah, apologies if I sound weird. But yeah, so now we're going to add in our ladder all the way up here. And then we're also going to chuck in a, a bit of a ceiling here. Now, as for how exactly this works, what we're going to have to do is lure a zombie and chuck them in this spot here. Then we're going to chuck in three beds for three villages. And then also some job site blocks over here, which I'm just using some barrels because uh you know, it's easy to get. And yeah, so we're going to add in three villages and then chuck in a zombie and then this will increase the spawn rate of the iron golems. Speaking of the iron golems, let's add in a bit of a scaffolding up to the top here and add in the stuff for this. All right, so we're actually going to have to remove part of the uh, edge of the castle top thing here. Then let's add in a ceiling to this entire layer. Then we're going to chuck in some fences all along this side and also on this side over here too. And then we're also going to put some stone slabs on these blocks here. This is going to stop the iron golems from spawning over in this side. And then and uh, of course, I forgot to grab my other stuff, but we're going to be putting some water buckets here. We're going to put three so that they flow down this way. We're also going to have to get a whole bunch of string to put on top of all of these blocks to stop the golems from spawning out here. Then we're also going to add on some signs here and then some more signs above those. And that's just to stop the water from flowing out too far. And then I'll also be adding in like a bit of a channel thing that will send the iron golems down to this tower and then down further. And uh, yeah, I'm going to have to go ahead and get a whole bunch of stuff. I'm going to do this to each tower and then put in all of the water and stuff as well. So uh, yeah, I'll be back in a minute. Then I decided to go and do some mining, and I actually found this mine shaft, which came in pretty clutch. We ended up finding a whole bunch of stuff that we need for this build. Come on, give me another name tag. Yes, yes, we need three for the zombies. And I got two diamonds, I didn't even see that. What the hell? 
Hell yeah. Alright, there's the next chest. Please be the third and final name tag in here. Yes! Hell yeah. That is perfect. Ooh, another chest? Just for the just for the giggles? What the hell? That's garbage, man. Oh, there's pure garbage right in there. Well, um, I'm honestly so glad that we found this mine shaft because we literally got everything we need. We got a whole bunch of iron, a bunch of tracks to transport the villagers and the zombies. We got three name tags for the zombies so they don't despawn and all the string that we need as well to stop the golems from spawning where we don't want them to spawn. Oh my God, get out of here, mate. What the hell? All right, now with pretty much almost everything set up, all that's left to do now is to just add in our mechanism. So I'm just going to dig a little bit of a hole in the side of our uh, tower here. And so first I'm just gonna chuck a temporary block here so we can add in our double chest in this spot then directly above this chest we're going to place in one hopper and then uh, and then we're going to chuck another hopper and then we're going to add some more hoppers that all point into this central hopper here next i'm going to chuck a sign on top of all of these hoppers so that the uh, lava that we're going to be placing stays on the top half just like that and uh, i'm going to be pretty careful doing this and yeah so now we're going to chuck our lava on right here i'm going to place these signs back chuck our stone blocks back on and uh, as you can see we what the hell there was a man right there did you see it and yeah, so as you can see, we have our lava here. So whenever an iron golem falls down, he's going to uh, be executed by the lava. I'm not sure why it hasn't flowed into that corner. That's a bit weird. And yeah, and then when he dies, his iron will be sucked up by the hoppers down into our chest right here. And so that leaves us with uh, pretty much the last thing to do now, which is bring in our villagers and zombies into each tower. And then that'll allow all of the iron golems to start spawning at the very top of the towers, flow down into this water river thing, and then down into our execution chamber. And and uh, yeah, it's going to be an absolute pain in the butt getting all the villagers and zombies over here. So I will just do it as a time lapse, of course. Okay, so now with all of our villagers and zombies in here, well, except for the uh, extra two that are supposed to be in here, they uh, unfortunately died as I left them outside during the nighttime. But yeah, now with three in this one, three in that one, and one in this one, I'm gonna stay here for half an hour and see exactly how much iron we get. So just while letting it run, while I've been like just adding in all the villagers and stuff, we've accumulated 44 iron ingots already, which is amazing. So yeah, I'm just gonna AFK here for exactly half an hour and see exactly how many iron ingots we get. All right, it's been exactly half an hour. Let's see how much iron we got. Oh my God, there's a lot of stuff going on over here. Okay, oh, that's pretty good. We got almost two stacks of iron ingots. Hell yes. That would have taken me like probably two hours to mine all of that crap. And uh, yeah, I don't even have to do anything. It's awesome. And yeah, so I'm definitely happy with the build overall. It took a lot longer than I thought it would. Oh, there's a missing slab there. Uh, give me a second. There we go, much better. Yeah, so I still need to get two more villagers into this tower over here to get it running at full capacity. If having extra villagers in there makes much of a difference, but yeah. Okay, so after leaving the farm run for a little while, I noticed that uh, it just completely stops working. And after looking it up, I realized that... What the hell? Dude, why is there so many endermen everywhere in my freaking area? Like, go away. Uh, yeah, I realized that the villagers need to break line of sight with the zombies every once in a while. As you can see, Greg here has been terrorizing the villagers for too long. So I need to figure out a way to just kind of hide this zombie and then bring him back up. So I'm thinking I might replace the floor block below him with a piston. And then I'll hook it up to like a redstone clock or something like that. So it just pushes him up and pulls him back down every once in a while. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a piston or three some redstone stuff and yeah hopefully we can get this figured out all right so i'm back with all of my stuff i've got everything that i should probably need to get this working and so the first thing i'm going to do is just make a bit of a platform here so that i can uh, actually work around this and so the zombie is on this block right here as you can see and so that means we need our piston to be right here facing upwards which uh that's going to be a bit of a pain to do i think if i destroy this i might be able to place it there we go hell yeah all right and so now i just need to make a bit of like a repeater clock thing it's been a while since i've made one so just bear with me here all right so we're gonna place two repeaters like this and just set them to like the maximum delay of uh ticks or whatever and then let's do the same thing on this side here then we're gonna connect those up with some redstone dust and then uh put some more redstone over this way i'm not sure if that's actually gonna work but yeah we'll see so let's destroy this let's get our zombie down i'm pretty sure that should stop yes that stops him from freaking actually does it no they're still freaking out okay that sucks 
Damn, I wonder why they're still freaking out. That's a bit whack. I wonder if we were to put some slabs here. Okay, so that stops them. Now let's try putting our zombie guy up and see what happens. So I'm just going to get rid of that for now. Put on our redstone torch. And yes, okay, so they start freaking out again. So that right there is perfect. And now what we need to do is uh, hook up our redstone thing. And I'm pretty sure I need to move this over one. So yeah. All right, so now let's place in our repeaters on the maximum delays again. Hook it up like so. Uh, it's still not going to work, isn't it? Actually, no, we can just put a full block right here and that should work perfectly. Okay, now let's try turning it on by just quickly doing that. Hell yeah. All right, well, there's the next problem is uh, when they actually go to bed, they're not getting freaked out anymore. So let's try once again, let's try something else. Let's elevate these beds up a little higher. So let's try putting the beds on this layer here and he's still going to sleep. Uh, okay, so we've, yeah. Oh wait, no, he's waking up. Okay, so we should be onto something here. All right, now let's whack on all of our beds like so. And yes, so they are going to sleep and then they're waking up again. I think that's how it's supposed to work. Uh, yeah, hopefully that works. And uh, yeah, now I'm just going to go ahead and add this into every single one of our towers. And uh, hopefully that starts spawning the golems once again. It looks like it has already worked. As you can see, we do have some iron in here, which is good. All right, now with that piston system added into all of the towers, it seems like the farm is now working properly again. So thank God for that. Gamers, I have wasted so much time of my life manually smelting items when I could have been doing more productive things, like watching YouTube videos. So it's time to speed things up a little and get some other things done too. Let's get started. All right, so to create this super smelter, we're gonna need a pretty large area and I want it to be pretty close to my base as I don't want it to have to be like a trek to get over there, you know? So I'm thinking this spot right here, we're gonna have to do a little bit of landscaping as it's gonna be quite large. So yeah, I'm gonna get digging right now and uh, I'll be back in a second. Okay, so there's the outline for all of the pillars. So as you can see, this is going to be a pretty big super smelter. It's actually going to be two super smelters built into one. And yeah, now I'm going to get started designing all the walls. And for the sides, I'm thinking of doing something like this. So we're going to have some upside down stairs like so. And then I'm going to have to put in some trap doors to cover up the bottom area here. Then for the actual main part of the wall, what I'm going to do is chuck in some fences on the left and right side. And then just fill up the rest of the entire window here with some glass. And then finally, all on top of this, we're going to chuck on some spruce slabs like so. And uh, I'm pretty sure this is going to work with uh, the roof that we're going to be doing. There's not going to be like a weird gap there or anything like that. And yeah, so I'm going to be pretty much repeating this on every single wall and just kind of changing up the length of it, depending on the length of the wall, you know. And then uh, we'll come back to the front door and I'll show you how that's going to look. And uh, unfortunately the recording messed up, so here's the completed front wall design, and uh, I'll explain how it works at the end of the build. Now of course there's uh, there's no roof on this, so uh, let's just add that in real quick right now. Okay, now with everything I need for the interior, which as you can see is quite a lot of stuff, uh, I've actually been holding off this project because I've needed so much iron, which I just could not be bothered mining, but thankfully we created a, a nice ultimate iron farm in the last episode, which helped us uh, pretty much get everything we need for this. So yeah, let's head on inside and I'll show you just how we're we're going to create the uh, technical kind of stuff for this build. So firstly, we're going to be adding in some slab platforms on this section here and also on this side. I will just say that this build is going to pretty much just be mirrored. So this side is going to be exactly the same as this side. So I'll pretty much just show one side as it's just going to be the same thing uh, on the other side. So yeah, starting here, we're going to be adding in a powered rail right here. Then we're going to continue this off down this way. And uh, I'm going to chuck another one in here and then continue this one this way as well. Next, we actually have to add in all all of our furnaces and hoppers on this side. So let's add in our first one here. Then we're going to continue it down to the left for a total of five furnaces. And then we're going to repeat this on the other side as well for a total of 10 furnaces on this side, which means we're going to have 20 furnaces in total in this entire build. Now let's go ahead and add in the hoppers on the back, on the top, and also down on the bottom. The hoppers on top here are the ones that are going to input all of our smeltable items. So like our iron ore and stuff. The ones on the backs are the ones that's going to input all of our fuel blocks and then the ones on the bottoms are going to be the output ones. All right, so now with all of those placed in, we can go ahead and add in the rest of our rails here. So this first one's going to continue along all the way across all of these hoppers. As we get to this back area here, we're gonna chuck in a couple of slabs and then also a block of redstone here. That's just so that we can get power to this powered rail right here. Then we're gonna continue this down all the way to the back and finally ending it off with another powered rail. Then for this side, we're just going to do pretty much the same thing, except it's going to transition up on top of these hoppers. 
we're gonna add in a slab here that's going to allow it to go over to this side like so. Now to power all of these rails, firstly we're gonna place a torch right here to power this one. Then we're gonna place a couple of blocks like so, with a redstone torch on the end of this, a redstone torch up here, and then also we're gonna chuck in some redstone dust right here to power these two. Now if we chuck on our two minecarts with hoppers on these two starting points right here, and we head outside and turn these two levers on, as you can see, our minecart gets completely stopped. Uh, I'm not sure why it's doing that. Please don't do it again. Okay, good, thank you. <laughs> and it stopped over here, man. What the hell's going on? Okay, I'm not sure why it was stopping. That was... Oh my god, no. Why is it stopping? Why the hell is it stopping? That's actual dog shit. Uh, well that sucks. It looks like I'm going to have to figure this out. That's an absolute pain in the ass. Alright, so it turns out this glass block here is, uh, stopping it, which never really used to happen with this build. Uh, I don't know why, but we'll just, uh, replace these blocks here with some glass panes instead. Actually, they're not gonna connect up to the bloody fence. Uh, I'll figure it out. Just don't worry about it. But, uh, yeah, now with that working, that basically means that this whole side of the super smelter is working perfectly, and, uh, it's pretty much ready to go. So I'm gonna go grab some items to smelt, and, uh, uh, we can just see how exactly this works. All right, so how this works, we pretty much just chuck in our smeltable item into this chest here. As you can see, it just gets completely sucked dry. Uh, that sounds kind of wrong. And then in the right chest here, we chuck in our coal. Next, we can flick these levers and uh, just head on inside. And as you can see, it doesn't work. Oh my God, man, what have I done wrong? Huh? Bro, what? Oh, you can't smelt die. You what? How do you make polished diorite then? What is this game? I thought you could smelt diorite. As you can see, I'm on the verge of losing my mind at the moment. So um, just bear with me here, guys. Okay, I'm back with a whole bunch of cobblestone that I just went and mined. Uh, so yeah, we can chuck that in. As you can see, it gets quickly emptied into the uh, minecart hopper thing. And now we can turn the lever on and just watch all of our furnaces light up nice and good. Hell yes. And uh, yeah, as you can see, it distributes it all pretty evenly. Uh, it's not 100% perfect, but uh, it'll do, you know. Oh, actually, this side is not complete. Uh, we have to link it up to the output chest and to do that all we have to do is just place in a couple more hoppers like so and then link these sides up like so as well and now all of our smelted cobblestone well you know it's stone that's what it is when it's smelted, uh, it ends up in this chest here. So we don't even have to go inside the build. We pretty much just put in our items here and here, and then our final items get put into this chest here for us. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much how it works. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just create this entire thing on the left side of the build as well. And uh, I'll see you guys in a minute. All right, and there we go. There's our fully operational super smelter. This will definitely come in handy when I'm uh, working on a new project and I need like a whole bunch of stone smelted at once. Or if I just wanna smelt like a whole bunch of my ores or anything, I can just come in here chuck it in, chuck in some coal, and uh, just let it run, you know? All right, now with our super smelter all done, I've decided I want to finally head to the nether and uh, just get some stuff done there that I need to do and, uh, well, have been needing to do for uh, quite a while now. And just for you that don't know, I absolutely hate the nether as it's just like a, you know, it's just a hellscape. But uh, yeah, we're going there out of absolute necessity to get some blaze rods and stuff. It'd be cool to start making some potions and actually, you know, find the end portal and stuff. And so we're gonna head in there and try and find the uh, nether stronghold thing so uh, let's just dive right in okay there's already I'm already dying man it's been like five seconds why is there zomb why is there two zombies in here dude what are they doing three mate settle down buddy now I'm actually very glad I have a pickaxe like this so I can uh, just mine through all this stuff real quick all right and so now it's time to find the nether stronghold uh, I have no idea which way to go so uh, yeah oh okay how's it going buddy I don't know why it's not shooting at me. And, uh, okay. I'm not sure what's going on there, but yeah, we're just not going to talk about that. Oh, okay. Hello. All right. You've decided to attack and you're dead. See you later, buddy. Probably should have brought more food with me. I mean, I did bring some carrots, but, uh, yeah, it's not going to be great. I might actually up my render distance as well, just so I can find it a little bit easier. All right. That's a little bit better. Now let's, uh, actually, uh, I should probably write down my coordinates for this area so I don't get lost. That would definitely suck. Okay, now we are good to go. Gamers, I finally found it. Holy crap. It only took me like bloody half an hour, mate. Also, I don't really know what this is. Uh, it's kind of in the ground. But uh, yeah, we actually have a blaze spawner right here as well, which is pretty good. Uh, it's also pretty annoying because uh, it doesn't mean I can actually really get in here to kill them easily. But, oh man, I'll try. Yeah, see, that's getting pretty dangerous right there. I'm, um, uh, yeah, 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 give me a second. Oh, I have a bloody shield. I keep forgetting to use it, man. I'm just not that kind of guy. Oh, my. Mate, this is actually hard. All right, shields up. Fire away, boys. Go for it. <laughs> they completely missed. Okay, let's jump in here. Uh, I'm gonna make myself, like, a little safety box. Uh, I'm gonna get my carrots here just in case you know how it is. Oh, okay, we got a man coming up on us. Come on, mate, just... 
Yeah, you're a prick. You really are. You would shoot as soon as I lower my goddamn shield, man. Uh, we still have no blaze rods, man. How many have I killed? And we've got zero. What the hell is this? Oh, there's two on the ground. Okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay, there's another one. Let me grab it real quick. Yee! How many have we got? Four? I don't know how many I want to get. Maybe like, maybe like 15 or something like that. Just so I don't really have to worry about coming back. Ah! What the hell? Oh my god. Oh my god, you see that? Holy sh**. That was, that was, nah. That was too close, buddy. I'm gonna wait until we regen here because that was way too dank. All right, that's a bit better. Let's go back in. We've got seven so far. There's a boy down here. What is he doing? He dropped, he did drop one. Okay. Okay, I'm very glad I brought my backup carrots because we're already down to two pork chops. I didn't think I'd be going through that many. Oh no. My god. Oh, my life was actually flashing before my eyes then. That was, um, that was way too close. E. Eat, 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 eat. <sighs> Bro, this is... I just want three more rods at least. Come on. These boys don't mess around. Let's be real here. Oh, shit. Get out. Oh, mate. Okay. Okay. Settle down. Settle down, guys. I'm done. I'm done. I've got my 17 rods. I'm out of here. Okay, so with our 17 rods acquired, let's go ahead and explore this, uh, what the- Dude, they're chasing me down. Go away, buddy. I don't want you anymore. All right, well, it looks like that way was a dead end. Let's go this way and, uh, try not to- Okay, that way's a dead end as well. Okay, this way looks promising. We've got, like, a nice staircase up here. Uh, it's just another- It's just another spawner, man. Is there actually gonna be any, like, anything here that I can explore? That would be pretty cool. Like, guys. Um, what the fuck was that? Dude, please don't. Please don't. Let me eat. Oh, it's gonna be really close here. Well, that's, um, that's quite unfortunate. That's it. I'm guessing it was a blaze that hit me from behind. Perfectly into the lava, dead. Couldn't do anything. That's why I didn't want to go to the f***ing nether. Because I die every time. Every time I go to the nether, I'm dead. If I'm in there for longer than like three minutes, I'm dead. That sucks. And so that brings us to the unfortunate end of this hardcore series. Now, thankfully, I did save a backup of this world before I went into the nether, just in case if I died, which uh, obviously, unfortunately, did happen. And so if you're wanting to download this world for yourself, feel free to head over to my Patreon. It's a great way to support me in the process as well. But just because this series is over doesn't mean that uh, we can't just start a new one, you know? And so that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. I have so many more ideas and different ways that I want to do things for the next series, and I'm very excited for what we're going to be doing. Doing. Now, I must say, even though I really like the layout of this village, it's not entirely what I had envisioned. I wanted a more realistic kind of setting with maybe closer together buildings and just like an overall more realistic kind of layout. I might also even change up the biome that we're going to be living in and the style of the houses as well. And so if you're looking forward to the start of the new series, I highly encourage you to subscribe to be notified of when that starts. But uh, yeah, as for this series, that does mark the unfortunate end. And yeah, so that's pretty much it for everything that happened in this series. I'll be starting a new one very soon, so be sure to subscribe to be notified of when that starts. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.